Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto is the reincarnation of Hagoromo and Hamura part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. 5 years after the Kyubi attack. Naruto was sitting in the mud as it rained while he watched the children, who never played with him anyway, walk away with their parents. Naruto just watched and sat in the rain and after a few minutes and then he got up. Well might as well go home even though there's not anyone waiting for me. Naruto thought bitterly. Naruto began walking home and after a while he arrived at his apartment opened the door, closed it in behind him and locked it. Naruto changed into his pajamas and lied down on his bed and fell asleep. Unknown dimension. Naruto woke up and looked around, and then he saw a man floating in midair, he had red samurai armor on with a white coat, he held a kakara with rings on one end, and a 910 THS completed circle on the other end. He had red hair and nine black orbs floating underneath him, he had a smile triangle beard and a kind look on his face. However what caught Naruto's attention was the man's eyes which were light purple sclery and eye rides with a ripple pattern that spreads over the eyeball. Greetings Naruto. The man spoke in the kind voice that echoed with power. Naruto backed up in fear of this man for fear of being attacked. Whoa whoa Naruto calm down I'm not going to hurt you. Naruto looked at this man confused and curious. How do you know my name? That's easy I know how to recognize a descendant of my blood when I see them my name is Hagoromo Tsutsuki, but you may know me as the Rakuto Senen. Naruto's eyes widened in shock as even he had heard of the ancient shinobi who was said to create all ninjutsu. You were the one who created ninjutsu Naruto said shocked. Ninshu? Hagoromo corrected irritated. Ninshu. Yes Ninshu the art that I created was meant to spread peace, don't compare that to the tools of war that your ancestors created. Hagoromo said as he remembered the art that his followers had corrupted. So why are you here? I'm here to train you as my successor in all Ninshu. Your successor? Naruto asked excited. Yes you will have the powers of both Asura and Indra, as well as Moka my Yuzumaki daughter. Hagoromo formed a pool of water and waved his staff over the pool. When the ripples cleared Naruto saw a man with long brown hair cut short on top. Two locks wrapped in bandages framed either side of his face. His eyebrows were cut short, a symbol of his nobility, and his eyes had blue markings around them, which were turned up at the corners. He wore a high-collared, light-colored kimono held closed by a dark sash. The collar of the kimono was adorned with magatama. He wore a black full-bodied suit underneath. Then the pool rippled again, and a second person appeared had short, spiky brown hair, two locks of which were wrapped in bandages, framing either side of his face in a similar manner to his brother. He possessed stern facial features. He wore what seemed to be a blank forehead protector and at a later time, bandages around his forehead. He wore a light-colored kimono with magatama adorned around the collar. The kimono was held closed by a dark-colored sash. Underneath, he wore a black full body suit. Let me give you a small lesson in history young Naruto. A millennium ago, my mother, Kagaya, who longed for peace, believed it was necessary for her to attain godlike powers in order to put an end to all humanity's conflicts, for that reason she defied the taboo of consuming the fruit of the Shinju. Using her newfound power, mother put an end to all of humanity's conflicts, and she was worshipped from that day on as Yusugai no Megami, rabbit goddess, and had settled down amongst humans, as she would eventually get pregnant and bear twin sons, me, and my brother, Himura. As time passed, however, Kagaya began to lose trust in humanity as the power she now held ultimately corrupted her. This eventually led her to madness as she created her ideal of peace by trapping her victims in the infinite Tsukiyomi, which changed her public image from that of a benevolent goddess into that of a demon. Some time later, in a fit of envy that her sons had inherited her chakra, Kagaya combined with the Shinju itself and turned against them in the form of the monstrous Yubi. Their intense battle ended with me and my brother separating and absorbing our mother's powerful chakra, while sealing her body to form the core of a celestial body that would become known as the moon. My brother later departed along with the rest of the Otsutsuki clan to the moon to guard his mother's remains, while I stayed in order to spread chakra to humanity and teach them the concept of Ninshk. My ultimate wish was to establish peace across the world, but it was a goal that would never be achieved in a single lifetime. Knowing this, I chose to entrust his dream and legacy to Indra and Asura and began to teach them Ninshk. The my son, Indra, was acknowledged by me as a true prodigy, who quickly began to revel in his natural prowess and became very solitary. The younger son, Asura, proved to be the exact opposite, having shown no special abilities or natural talent, but he pushed on through his limitations, growing stronger and more mature because of his struggles and making friends with others along the way. I acknowledged Asura's chosen path, agreeing that love and cooperation were the true keys to peace. Inspired by his younger son, I separated the Juubi chakra within his body and used his to divide it into nine separated bodies, creating the Biju and giving each a name. 
as a result of extracting them all at once, I was left weakened and incapacitated for several months, though the powerful life force of the Juubi Hus kept me alive. Some time after their creation, the young-tailed beasts were told that they were all still linked to one another despite being separate entities. I also told them that they would eventually become one again, yet not as they originally were, and that one shall appear at that time to show them what true power is. I eventually sealed the husk of the Juubi within the moon. On my deathbed, I chose Asura to be my successor, but Indra was, overcome by bitterness and envy, as well as being encouraged and manipulated by Black Zetsu, fought against Asura, beginning a war between them that would continue through their descendants. Suspecting that Indra or one of his reincarnations would eventually attempt to take Asura's power for themselves, I left behind a tablet detailing his history in an attempt to make them reconsider. Only those who possess the Rinnegan can fully decipher the contents of the tablet, while a reader with other Dejutsu such as the Sharingan can still partially interpret the information. However, unknown to me, Black Zetsu, a manifestation of my mother's will, had altered the contents of his tablet so he could manipulate Indra's descendants, the Achiha, through the ages into resurrecting Kagaya and initiating the Mugen Tsukiyomi Anu. I never knew about most of this, but my daughter, Mocha, explained to me the truth of my actions and the horror of my mother's plan. So what does this have to do with me? Naruto asked clinging to Hagoromo's every word. As I said I am here to make you my successor in Ninshu you hold two powers, the body powerful life force and physical energy of the Senju, and the chakra of the Uzumaki, and the shape manipulation that will help you reach new levels of Ninshu. Hagoromo formed another pool of water formed in midair, and a small mirror was formed from the water, and an image formed in the water. Two people stood before each other, Madara and his spiked hair stood on the right looking left, and Hashirama stood on the left looking right. Madara why did it have to end like this? Hashirama asked. Our clans will never work together properly what has happened will happen, but that's not important. Madara responds then the draws his gun by. Now shall we dance. I'm sorry Madara that it came to this. Hashirama says, then he and Madara charged each other. Hashirama had a large broad sword without guard and a scroll on his back. Hashirama struck with the blade and Madara blocked with the gun by, then they both jumped back. Madara landed on the summoned Kurama, and Hashirama landed on Tree Branch. As Kurama and Madara charged Hashirama weaved hand signs. Lokuten. Mikuryu no Jutsu. Wood style. Wood dragon Jutsu. The dragon with the elephant nose wrapped itself around Kurama, who gripped it with one of his claws opening his jaws and small balls of red and blue chakra combined into a purple ball, and he fired it at the wooden dragon, who caught it in his mouth only to burst apart, and Hashirama weaved more signs. Mokuten. Makijin no Jutsu. Wood style. Wood Golem Jutsu, a wooden hand grabbed the bowl off Chakra and shoved it back towards Kurama, and Madara blocked it with his Susanao, and it exploded, and Hashirama blocked it with Mokuten Hobi no Jutsu. Wood Style. Wood Expulsion Jutsu, when the dust cleared Kurama was wrapped in Madara's Susanu. It's the Mokuten Hobi no Jutsu eh? Perfect for taking on difficult beasts Madara said looking down in Hashirama. He clad his Susanu around the Biju-like armor. Madara you crafty fox. One of the arms on the Susanu that held a blade struck down at Hashirama, but two wooden hands rose up and caught the blade. I can read your sword swings. Hashirama clapped his hands and thrust them outward and called out. Mokuten. Hate no Jutsu. Wood style. Laughing Buddha Jutsu, at Hashirama's command a number of gigantic wooden hands that erupt upward from beneath the ground, which encircle and then attempt to restrain a chosen enemy. The size of each of these hands is around the size of Kurama. Madara swung the other sword and obliterated all the hands, as well as several mountaintops. The explosion and force of the swing tossed rocks and dust into the air, and Hashirama jumped on several and started leaping towards the sea. At this rate, this land will be completely obliterated it's best to move this to the seashore. Hashirama kept leaping, and Madara and his Biju Susanu followed with a cry of. You're not getting away. Hashirama leapt for a few more feet and landed at the shore of the sea. Kurama, running on two legs, charged up another Biju Dama, and Madara wrapped the blade of one of the swords around the ball, and it fired at Hashirama, and Madara shouted with some glee in his voice. There, try catching that. Hashirama landed and slid for a bit, and then bit his thumb. And slammed his palm on the ground. Guchius. Gaj Krashman. Summoning. Quintuple Rashomon, Hashirama summons five Rashmon gates to block the incoming attack. This. Will change the trajectory. Madara narrowed his one visible eye. The bladed Biju Dama flattened the gates with easy, but it was sent flying across the sea and hit a mountain in on the other shore, and it exploded. Hashirama, it's been a while since we fraud each other earnestly. You can see that I have changed. Hashirama clapped his hands together and stood perfectly still. You're going to lay everything to waste. To all we've accomplished up until now, Madara. Nothing will come of us battling each other, it will only weaken the village and shinobi of the village. 
This is an insult towards our siblings and our friends. You know nothing of my. I don't want to kill you. Are you implying that you could kill me at any time? No, I'm saying we're friends. I've already reached it. Karama stood up and roared. And so be it. Hashirama got red pigment around his eyes. Sent Mokuten. Shinsk send you. Sage Artwood style. True thousand hands, here I go, Madara. Bring it, Hashirama. Madara countered as both charged out letting loose a furious war cry. Jōhokubutsu. Artifacts of the Buddha, Hashirama statue unleashed a barrage of fists which were blocked with bladed biju dama from Madara, but in the end, the sheer amount of fists overwhelmed the blasts and slammed into the Susanifeed Karama, and when the dust cleared Madara and part of Karama were exposed. He stripped away the Susanu. Madara said shocked with that Hashirama detached the statue from its fists and charged Madara and grabbed Karama, who was tiny compared to the statue, holding him still, and then the wooden golem enshrouded by a wooden dragon leapt down, and with a palm extend, with a kanji for city touched Karama, after Madara had leapt away realizing the danger. As soon as the palm touched the red glow of Karama's eyes dimmed and he soon fell asleep. Hashirama jumped down to face his former friend both looked at each other for a second, then they charged. Madara. Hashirama. After a long while of fighting each other, Hashirama's sage mode was exhausted, and Madara's Sharingan deactivated both were exhausted, it rained around them, and the land was ripped apart. Madara smiled and glared at his rival. This time you won't reach the other side. Both charged each other across the river that was formed from their conflict. There was a small katana in Hashirama's hand and gun by and scythe in Madara's hands, they both clashed samurai style, and Madara was able to land on his feet, but Hashirama collapsed into the water. Madara turned his head and looked at Hashirama, while the latter struggled to all fours and looked at Madara. I'm the one still standing opposite from the last time. I just wanted to protect the dream I finally reached I don't want anymore. You look pretty depressed Hashirama can't perk back up this time, eh? Madara turned to his former friend a confident smile on his face. When suddenly he was stabbed through the heart from behind. Madara looked shocked and saw that where Hashirama was there was a wood statue. Mokuten Bunshin. I can't believe my back was taken. I will protect our Nomai village. No matter what, I still believe to this day that protecting the village will lead to the protection of the people, shinobi and children. I will not forgive anyone who threatens the village, be they a friend sibling or even my own child, Madara collapsed to his knees. You've changed Hashirama. You've got your priorities backwards, eventually it shall someday lead the village to darkness. With that Madara collapsed dead. A few seconds later Hashirama collapsed completely exhausted. The mirror faded to black and shattered. As you can see when Indra and Asura clash their wills drive them to fight till the end. Hagoromo said sadly. What does that have to do with me? Naruto asked. You are Asura reincarnated and with his power you also have the chakra of my daughter Mocha, but I will give you a gift all the powers of the two who you just watch clash. Naruto was practically bouncing off the walls with happiness but held it together for the sake of looking dignified, but Hagoromo wasn't done. But there is more when those three powers combine you get the Rinnegan which are even stronger than the Iron No Man Jekyo. Naruto was bouncing off that walls unable to contain his excitement any longer. After a while of bouncing off the walls, Naruto looked back at his new teacher ready to learn. Just then a man with tall and pale skin with hairless brow ridges and waist-length white hair appeared, and right next to him was a small girl. The man's bangs were short hung to left side of his face with a chin-length lock which hung from the right side of his face. He also had small horn-like protrusions on his forehead and the renowned Byakugan in each of his eyes. He wore a light full-length kimono with a pattern of six black magatama around a high collar and dark pants. He had his sword in its sheath strapped to his left hip. He also had a dark crescent moon representing Yinmark in his left palm. The girl Naruto recognized as Hinata Hayuga, heiress of the Hayuga clan, and one of the only people who actually gave a damn about Naruto. Hamura. Hagoromo. What are you doing here? Both asked confused. Training my successor in what is to come. Both glared at each other. In my pocket dimension that I created. What do you mean your pocket dimension we created it together you moron? Both Naruto and Hinata looked at each other, then back at the arguing adults confused. After a few minutes of arguing Hagoromo held up a hand and they both stopped. Okay okay. Hagoromo said. So we both agree that we created this place together right? Yep. And we both intended to bring our chosen successor here without knowing the other intended to do the same. Yep. And so we are both in agreement that they can train here together and that it would be good to have a partner to work with in order to learn how to work with others. Sounds about right. Hamura nodded then he and his brother looked at their new apprentices. Okay you two we're going to train the both of you over the next eight years in order for you to reach your maximum and control over the powers we are going to teach you how to wield. The but what about our lives that we have to take care of back at home? Hinata asked scared about what her father would say. 
Agaroma will leave behind a Tamashi Bunshin, soul clones, for both of you to continue your lives as normal while we train you. Oh sure just throw me under the bus. Hagaromo rolled his eyes. Well in my defense you're the only one who can use that technique. Hamura countered. Hagaromo growled but agreed and vanished. Alright you two let's get started, but this will be a trial the likes of which never have been seen. Eight years later. Hanada and Naruto faced each other over the years the two had changed dramatically. Naruto now bore an outfit similar to Hagoromo's. He wore a white cloak with a black trim with black shinobi pants, he had a necklace with six magatama around his neck and a gun by on his back. At his waist he had a blade with a black hilt with a triangle at the pommel, the blade was black, but the cutting edge was silver, and a red flame ran from about five inches up to the guardless hilt. Naruto had horns on his forehead and his eyes which were still blue echoed with a deep power, his hair was identical to his father's. Hanada wears a light lavender, sleeveless kimono-style blouse with vertical lines, tied with a dark purple obi around her waist. She wears a pair of short dark navy shorts with thigh-high stockings, revealing parts of her upper thighs, and has changed her regular ninja sandals to black high-heeled boots. Hanada's hair also increased in volume and grows to hip length. Hanada had a blade hilt at her waist, it was Taburama's rage and no ken, but this was the real one, unlike the fake Taburama left behind before his death. Hinata was no longer the shy weak timid girl that people thought she was she was far more powerful than any Kanoichi before her. This will be your final test. Hagoromo said. I want no holding back from either of you, fight from the beginning as if your life depends on it. Hi sensei. Both students responded without taking their eyes of each other. So if you hold back you will be severely punished. Hamura said. We get it. Naruto rolled his eyes. Naruto-kun you must not be so impatient I know you want to test yourself, but I think we should at least let our teachers begin our match. Well if there are no objection then you will begin. Naruto and Hinata unleashed their chakra gold and silver from Naruto and a deep purple from Hinata. Hence again Rinnegan. Both children cried at once and Naruto cracked his neck and was ensnared in a gold light and he entered his six paths mode, the nine Jito Dama floated behind him, Hinata was enshrouded in a green light and a similar number of Jito Dama floated behind her. Hanada and Naruto wasted time at reaching their maximum, they charged each other each blow shattered the ground, each blast of chakra eradicated the land they had constructed the mountains the forest, everything their power touched was eradicated. Hamura and Hagoromo stood as they watched their disciples destroy the landscape. Naruto unleashed a roar and shattered the air that was around him, and a twister of wind swirled around him ripping apart the heavens and earth, and lightning flashed, and he smiled. Hinjutsu. Shmetsu. Forbidden technique. Annihilation, Hinata wrapped herself in the Jito Dama, and the blast wave eradicated all things around him, and when the dust settled the landscape was devastated, and Naruto clutched his left eye and laughed. I knew I shouldn't have taught him about the Jubis Tenpenchi he went and recreated it with his own chakra. Hagoromo sweat dropped. Naughty Naruto-kun you know why we labeled it a Jinjutsu. Hinata said as she emerged from her shell of Jito Dama. I thought it was cool. Naruto smiled. Naruto-kun Hinata growled. But we were told not to hold back. Hinata rolled her eyes and then she smiled and clapped her hands together. Then you asked for this. Wark no jutsu. Sexy technique, and instantly she was transformed into a naked version of herself, and Naruto rocketed back with a nosebleed, and Naruto wiped his nose and smiled. Naughty Hinata Haim you copied my original technique and redefined it to work on me. Oh like you wouldn't do the same. True but I'm done messing around. Naruto clapped his hands together and soon entered sage mode. Senpo Mokuten. Shinsk Senju. Upon activating the Jutsu Naruto creates a wooden statue of titanic proportions, easily able to dwarf a full-size Kurama, as well as a complete body Susanoo. Thousands of hands originate from the statue's back in countless concentric rows, while its two main hands are clasped, as if in prayer. Naruto smiled and thrust his hands out. CHMJM, Kabutsu. Naruto unleashed a barrage of wooden fists towards Hinata, who was hard-pressed to dodge the attacks, as each one easily destroyed the environment with such power that Hinata was blasted back with such force, she coughed up blood, and her right eye was bleeding, with the strain of the jutsu she used to save herself at the last second. Amenate Jakara. Seems the Tensigen is just as capable with Jiken Ninjutsu as the Rinnegan is. And you thought you were the only one who could use Amenate Jakara. You're strong, Haim. Well can't blame me can you a girl's gotta be tough if she's gonna survive in this world of shinobi. Naruto held out his hand and formed a Rasengan and started to channel the elemental affinities into the Rasengan. Greed no sir to Rasengan. Creators slate Rasengan. Haki Jiki. 
8 trigrams twin lions crumbling attack, both shinobi charged each other, and Hinata channeled chakra into her attack in her left hand, and she thrust it towards Naruto and Naruto thrust his hand with the Rasengan, and the two attacks collided, and the ground sky and trees trembled with the sheer force behind the attacks, and at first, neither attack dominated the other and. Slowly both attacks forced each other to detonate, and they were thrown back, and Naruto got up, and he was cut bruised and bleeding in several places, Naruto licked the blood from his arm. This blood this pain Naruto started laughing. This is my body. Naruto kept laughing while Hinata sighed and pinched her forehead. Naruto-kun since when was this not your body? Sorry, Hinata Haim. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Well I think that finished our training. Hagoromo said as he sweat dropped at his student's action. Well Hinata I think there is nothing more I can teach you. Hamura said. Well there is one thing that I can teach you Naruto. Hagoromo weaved more hand signs and slammed his palm on the ground. Kuchius. Jido Mezo. At his command a giant earth and colored humanoid entity with a decayed appearance, a body shaped into a robe, and a number of spike-like protrusions on its back. Brother you're not serious. He is worthy brother. But. That's my final decision and that's the end of discussion. Fine. Kuchius. Nine Biju. In a flash of smoke Shikaku Matatabi, Esobu, Son Goku, Kaku Oseken Chimei Jayuki and Kurama appeared. Dusan. Shukaku said confused. Yes Shukaku. Why are we all here? Matatabi asked. You are here to meet my reincarnation Naruto Uzumaki. So he's not that powerful. Isobu said and Naruto got a tick mark, but Hagoromo smiled. If you think so then why don't you test him? Isobu if you ever decide to listen to me for once in your life, let it be now don't do it. Kurama said. Who asked you Kurama? Isobu countered and he slammed a tail towards Naruto who simply grabbed it with one hand and he got a bored look on his face. You know he wasn't wrong. Naruto said and he spun around, and Isobu was dragged along as Isobu gripped at the ground, trying to get a grip and stop himself, but he couldn't, and Naruto tossed him far into the air and punched the air and slammed Isobu in the stomach. Isobu fell to the ground and crawled back to his siblings and looked at Naruto with growing respect and fear. Still doubt him Isobu? Hagoromo smiled. Nope. Isobu said. Now my children I need your help once more I need your chakra, so I can rebirth the Jubi. Then he is the one? Jayuki asked. Yes Jayuki he is. Kurama placed one tail over his father, and the other tailed beasts followed suit, and Hagoromo drew on their energy. Onlumpton. Biju SMZM. In a flash the nine Biju were staring at clones of themselves, and the Jido Mezo shot out chains, and the chains wrapped around the clone Biju, and sucked them in and in a few minutes a large wolf with white fur with glowing blue tips, and a blue mark around its left eye. What the? The wolf rubbed its eyes. Where am I? Hello Jubi. The wolf snapped toward the voice of his old host. You. The Jubi growled. I'm not particularly happy about seeing you again, but at the same time your power is needed. I'm not some tool for you to use for your own intentions. I was planted by Kami herself as a way to watch over the world and protect it, you dishonor that wish. I know very well what Kami-chan wanted, and I am aware that you were planted by her to protect this world, but she once told me that she wanted to you be a guardian, but Kagaya dishonored that and took some of your power. Kurama spoke. How do you know about Kami-sama's wish? She and I are lovers we don't tend to hide secrets from each other. I know you hate being used, but for this world to reach peace, you need to work with Naruto here, if you doubt his resolve test his heart I know you can. Hagoromo spoke to the Jubi, and it placed a tail on Naruto, and after a second a smile tugged at the wolf's lips. I see his heart is pure, but if I am to work with him I have a non-negotiable condition. I'm listening. Naruto spoke. You must part with the Kayubi. Absolutely not I don't abandon my friends and Kurama is my friend. It's okay Naruto. Kurama spoke. I know you and I are friends, but if we must part ways then I will always remember you as the greatest friend I ever had. Now, now you are being too reckless I said you can't work with Kurama, I didn't say your friend couldn't. The Jubi spoke. Naruto-kun I will gladly work with Kurama-kun. Hinata spoke up, Naruto placed a hand on Hinata and placed all of Kurama's power into Hinata instantly his heart started to stop and his world started going black. The Jubi placed a tail on Naruto, and instantly the Jubi was drawn into Naruto and regained his vision. I must talk to the Jubi. Naruto sat down and entered his mind. After a few minutes he was looking at the Jubi again. This is a nice place cozy. The Jubi spoke. If I am to work with you I would like to address you as an ally and a friend, so I ask what is your name? Lobo. It's nice to meet you Lobo I hope we can work well together. Naruto held out his fist, and Lobo bumped it with his own, and their chakra blasted to life and increased simultaneously. Naruto exited his mind and was looking back at the Biju, Hinata Hagoromo and Hamura. 
Well I am pleased to say you've achieved a bond with the Jubi even better than I did proves that he trusts you. Hagoroma said. Before we go I would like you to tell me your names and the names of your Jinchuriki. Naruto said looking at Nine Biju. Shukaku's my name and the name of my Jinchuriki is Gara from Suna, for some reason I'm always crazy when I'm with him. Shukaku spoke. I'm Matatabi and my Jinchuriki's name is Yujito Nai she's a Kumo Jonin. Matatabi was the next to speak. I'm Asobu and the name of my Jinchuriki is Yugura, but he's being controlled by a man in a mask. Kurama growled and spoke in a voice that echoed with anger. Was that mask embroidered with flame patterns? Yes. Then he is the one who forced me to attack Kanoha 13 years ago. I am the handsome monkey king of the water screen cave. The king of the sage monkeys, bestowed with the dharma name of sun by the sage of six paths. I am Son Goku, the great sage equaling heaven. My Jinchuriki's name is Rashi of Iwa, so I don't recommend you go to see him for now. Sun spoke. I am Koku and just like Sun my Jinchuriki is an Iwa shinobi who goes by the name of Han. Kakuo said. I am Seiken my Jinchuriki is named Yudakata and he's a rogue nin from Kiri. Seiken said cheerfully. I am Chimei my Jinchuriki is from Taki and her name is Fu. Chimei spoke. I am Jayuki and my Jinchuriki's name is Killer B from Kumo. Jayuki said. And you know who I am. Kurama finished. Well I think it's time for the two of you to return to the shinobi world. Hamura said Naruto and Hinata nodded and Naruto shifted his eyes to the EMS and the world swirled and the two vanished. Hamura looked at his brother and the nine biju. So I think those two are going to make fine shinobi. So is my job done brother? Guarding the Jito Mezo in the moon with the rest of the clan. Yes it is brother. Then I can rest finally. Hamura and the dimension faded as its creators were gone. Hinoha. Naruto and Hinata were on top of the stone monuments, and Naruto looked at Hinata and smiled. Alright I'm headed to Suna to help Gara with the issue with Shukaku, you inform Hokage Jiji of the situation I'll join you later, after you've taken care of the clan elders of the Hayuga. Naruto said activating his EMS. Gotcha Naruto-kun. Hinata said and then Naruto swirled into his pocket dimension. Hinata walked toward the Hokage's office, and when she arrived at the door she looked at the secretary. Hi I'm here to Hokage-sama. Go right ahead Hayuga-sama he shouldn't be busy. The secretary said happily and Hinata walked in. Hypocrite if Naruto-kun was here she'd say he was too busy. Hinata growled mentally. Humans are such arrogant creatures. Kurama said at his partner's comment. When Hinata walked in Saratobi looked up and saw her. Hello Hinata what can I do for you? Saratobi asked. Hi Hokage-sama, I was wondering if you could send your Anbu out of the room so we could talk in private. Hinata asked with a smile. Why? It's about Naruto-kun and I and a certain incident that occurred 13 years ago on the night of October 10th. Saratobi's eyes widened and he looked towards the shadows. Anbu, leave us. Hi, Hokage-sama. Four cries echoed and four shadows left, Saratobi made a hand sign and seals spread around the room. Now we can talk in peace. Saratobi looked at Hinata. Not quite. Hinata fired a bone at the coat hanger which turned into a shinobi who quickly started to disintegrate as the bone hit him. Now we can talk. Suna. Naruto swirled into existence on top of a hill overlooking the sand village and opened his chakra and felt out and soon he felt Shukaku's power and used Kamui to reach him. Naruto appeared behind a small tower. Naruto looked at Gara, and he suddenly felt sand wrap around his leg, Naruto used Kamui to escape and he looked at Gara. So you were able to sense me I'm impressed. Naruto said. You don't seem like any ordinary assassin, who are you? Gara asked. My name is Naruto Tsutsuki. Well, Tsutsuki that's not a name I've heard in this village before. Where did that come from? I think that it fits personally. Lobo said. Really Lobo you think so? Yeah you're the sage's reincarnation, so I think it only fitting you take his last name. Thanks Lobo I will take the name with honor. Naruto focused on Gara. It's not a name from any village it's a name that died out long before the shinobi villages were established. What do you mean? Gara asked. It is the name of the father of the being who calls your body home. Gara's eyes widened in horror. If you don't think that I'm telling you the truth fight me and find out. Naruto entered the Jubi Jinchuriki form, his hair turned white and a cloak of chakra surrounded his body and his hands were enshrouded in black. Gara fired sand at Naruto who knocked it aside with a black rod formed from the Jito Dama, the sand fell to the ground useless. Gara fired more sand at Naruto, but it ended with the same result, Naruto knocked it aside with ease, Gara started to transform into the Shukaku, but Naruto blurs behind him and with a swift chop to the neck dispels Shukaku's chakra and just as fast he slams a 5 point. Suppression seal over Gara's chakra network simultaneously suppressing Shukaku. Now for the hard part. Naruto took out some sealing ink and started to draw the Haki Fuin on Gara's stomach. Haki Fuin. Naruto placed a hand on Gara's head and entered his mind. 
R's mind. R was looking in the desert in his mind, and Shukaku was restrained by chains in the cage. What is going on for the first time I feel like myself? Gara asked. In view and Jutsu the symbol for insanity and control are almost identical with a small unnoticeable distinction, unless you a few Jutsu master. Naruto said as he appeared next to Gara. Naruto looked over at the new gate that stood open and waiting. What is that? A new cage for Shukaku which will allow you to protect and will help you free you from the control seal that someone attempted to place on you. Naruto placed his hand on the cage and shattered it then when the gate it was destroyed Jane shot from the cage then grabbed Shukaku and pulled him behind the gate and then it shut closed and the tag for seal appeared on the door. Finally I'm free from that stupid seal this one is much better. Shukaku said then he looked at Gara. Sorry about all the trouble I've caused you Gara. that seal was affecting both of us, but from now on I'm willing to work you and don't call me mother anymore I'm a dude. I thought you said you hated all humans. Gara said. Well I kinda do but you're not like most humans and I wanna help out with the mission Tusan gave me and the others. Mission. To bring peace to this world. Naruto said. Lobo and I are working towards that goal as are the other Jinchuriki and their Biju this is the first step. Naruto exited the mindscape and Gara felt a force from the outside pulling him back to the consciousness. Tsuna. Naruto and Gara looked at one another with a mutually understanding respect. Now that you have a new seal in place of the old one, you need to work on mastering the power of Shukaku while working on your own power. This will be a long and arduous process and you won't be able to do it by any other way than hard work. I'll leave you to it please try your best you can do it. Naruto activated his EMS, and with a simple activation, he left Gara to return to Konoha. Hyuga clan compound. Anada was sitting in front of her clan elders and her father, she had long since merged with her Tamashi Bunshin and gained the information that she needed and was now here to see why they had bothered her. The elders were looking at her with disdain, and her father was impassive, but thanks to Kurama, she could sense the fear he was hiding. You are a weak girl with no right you call yourself a Hyuga, well we can't banish you outright, because your father has forbid it, but we have decided to test you one more time, and when you fail you are banished from this clan, but you will be able to win, then your deepest heart's desire shall be fulfilled. Hio, Hinata's grandfather, spoke. Deal. Hinata said without fear. And I fight you you shitty old man. Hinata stood up and walked to the other side of the battle room and looked at her grandfather. You've sealed your doom if you think you can beat me, but I'll humor you. Hio stood before the girl and they looked at each other. I'll humor you with the first move you old man. Hinata let her guard down and smiled. Today old man. Die. Hio charged and slammed her palm into Hinata's chest shattering her heart. Hinata smiled and looked at her grandfather dissolved into smoke. Injutsu is a powerful thing, but so are Cage Bunshin, I can use that jutsu without signs, declaration or even the sign of performing this jutsu, but now I will beat you with my mother's style of fighting Juho. Hinata charged in. Juho. Hayaku Nijikachi Mizuhasho. Gentle Step 128 Water Palms, Hinata charged in water chakra dancing with her fingers, and she unleashed the barrage of strikes, and each one left behind devastating damage. Nisho. Yansho. Hatsho. Jiraksho. Sanju Nisho. Rakujayan Sho. Hayaku Nijikachi Sho. Hinata delivered the final strikes and blasted Hiyo back he tried to stand, but pain ripped through his body. What's going on? I can't move. Don't bother. Hinata stood over her grandfather's shattered body. I have severed every tendon and snapped every bone you have you will never walk again, assuming I let you live. What do you mean assuming I let you live? Are you suggesting you could kill me at any time? My power far exceeds any Hayugas. What do you mean? The clan that gave birth to this clan was the Otsutsuki, and our founder Hamura Otsutsuki gave me this power, and I will lead the Hayuga clan to a new era of greatness. Hinata raised her palm and slammed it into Hio's heart killing him. Without you. Well someone let out a lot of pent of aggression. A new voice called out and echoed from the room, and the air started to swirl as the distortion ended and Naruto emerged laughing. Oh and where were you? I was in Suna taking care of helping Gara and his situation. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Well my situation is all nice and taken care of here the Hyuga clan knows to fear me now. Hinata looked at the gathered elders. Isn't that right? Hinata said with a sickly sweet smile, the elders sweated and nodded to avoid her wrath. You're just like your mother. Hiyashi said laughing. She was scary when she was your age she had me wrapped around her finger. Well I need to take care of some things with Hokage Jiji and I'll see you tomorrow for graduation. Naruto said then kissed Tanada on the cheek, much to the displeasure of Hiyashi, but Naruto vanished in a swirl of his pocket dimension. Hinata went to walk to her room, but Hiyashi coughed gaining her attention. Yes father? Hinata asked. Tell Naruto that I wish to see him this evening for dinner to discuss certain matters. Hiyashi said in an even tone. Fine I will but, father. Yes. 
Hinata walked up to her father and activated her by Akigen. If you hurt him in any way I'll fucking kill you. Hiashi's face turned blue with fear and repressed a shudder as he was reminded of Hitomi's father, threatening him very similarly when he went on their first date. I'll keep that in mind. Hiashi said and Hinata spun on her heel and walked out of the room. Okage's office. For the second time today Siratobi was discussing several S-rank secrets with someone who wasn't even a genin. So tell me again how you know who your father is. Siratobi asked rubbing his temples. Who do you think I learned the Hiroshin from? Naruto countered with a smile playing at his lips. You are just like him able to make my head hurt without trying. Siratobi rubbed his temples more vigorously. So I trust I'll get the keys to dad's compound and I'll be able to modify it to my liking. Yes now stop bugging me I have paperwork to deal with. I'll tell you a secret old man if you use cage bunchons you'll be able to get twice or even three times faster. Naruto snatched the keys from Siratobi and warped away while Siratobi's face was drained of blood. Phew was heard all over the village as Naruto walked towards his new house laughing when he saw his Tamashi Bunshin walking back from the academy, and he walked over to the Bunshin and placed his hand on him, and instantly the information that he needed was absorbed into his brain. So tomorrow is the graduation exams huh? Naruto mused. Well I'll have some fun with that. What do you think Lobo you wanna show off tomorrow? Sounds good to me. Lobo smiled. Naruto continued toward his new house, and when he arrived he cut his thumb and pumped his chakra into it, and he unsealed the door and walked inside. Naruto walked around and started to form clones. I've got a lot work to do. Time skip 8 hours later. Naruto was in his best kimono and was sitting next to Hinata, while the two of them sat in front of Hiashi having dinner. Hiashi was impassive, and Hinata and Naruto were stealing looks at each other. After a while Hiashi stood up and looked at the clock and noticed the time. Naruto I have kept you long enough and you both have a long day ahead of you tomorrow, so I will bid you farewell, but before you go I ask that you accompany me to my office. Hi she said and Naruto nodded and followed Hiashi and Hinata leaked a little killer intent towards Hiashi, who remembered what his daughter said to him. Naruto was walking and entered the office with Hiashi, and he spoke. Naruto Uzumaki. Tsutsuki. Naruto corrected. I changed my last name to Tsutsuki to honor the Rakuto Senen, who was both my ancestor and predecessor. Naruto Tsutsuki, I have a question for you. What is it Hiashi-sama? What are your intentions for my daughter? I love her, I was a fool to not see what I had in front of me until I nearly lost it, and now that I have found it again I will never let it go. Very well but, now why should I give you the right to date her, a right I have denied to princes, sons of prestigious clans, and even the son of the fire daimyo himself. Because I am not only the most powerful shinobi ever born, but I am the son of your old friend Minato Namikas. Hiashi's eyes widened in shock, he of course, had been able to figure out the identity of Naruto's father, but he knew that his father's identity was kept a secret in order to protect Naruto from his enemies. How do you know? Father taught me how to use his Horation and taught me how to use it, and at the same time he taught me who I was. Very well Naruto you have indeed spoke truthfully you have my blessing and wish you happiness, and besides my daughter is very scary when she's angered. Very but she is still my love. Naruto left and returned home and went to sleep. Time skip one day later. Naruto walked out of his house and started walking towards the academy as he walked, he saw the looks of anger and rage as he passed some people threw things at him, but Naruto dodged and as he arrived at the academy, he saw several of his classmates and Naruto sat down next to Hinata. Sorry ready for the exams Naruto-kun? Hinata asked. Yeah and I'm done holding back. Naruto responded. What's going on here? Sakura shouted. You don't give Hinata the time of day and now you're acting like you've talked to her about everything. Well I thought it would take you longer to get your voice back you pink haired bitch. The whole room fell silent as Naruto responded to Sakura's rebuttal. Now if you thought that was shocking wait till you hear this. Naruto looked at Sakura and then looked at Hinata. I'm in love with Hinata always have been from the start and I hate you with undying passion and to top it off I've been holding back all this time and I'm done holding back. You're weak you have always have been and that whore you call Hinata is just as weak and stupid. Sakura shouted back and Naruto unleashed a huge blast of killer intent and Sakura was floor and unable to breathe. Insult be all you wish, but if you value your life never insult Hinata Haim. Naruto was livid and was prepared to kill Sakura, but then Mizuki and Aruka walked in and that disrupted the focus of the class and Naruto who sat down and then Aruka spoke. Alright, welcome to the genin exams here you will be tested on your way to become shinobi. Aruka said. First we'll start with roll call. Shino Aburam. Here came the monotone response from Shino. After a while of names being called. Hinata Hayuga. Here. Hinata said and laughed at everyone's face when they saw her and felt her power. H.O.W. Ever heard of holding back? 
Hinata asked laughing. You've been holding back this whole time? Yes I have my true power is even stronger than that of Madara Hashirama's power. You're bluffing. Sasuke called. No, she's not. Naruto smiled. Anyway. Haruka said. I think that I've proved that we have all proven that we are all here so let's begin. Haruka started handing out the paper tests and Naruto was able to destroy the test and so was Hinata and others, but in the end that was only the first part. After a while Haruka collected the tests. Mizuki grade the tests, I'll take them out for the kunai training. Right. Mizuki responded and went to grade the tests. Haruka called up the students and one by one the students took the test and scored pretty well. Naruto Uzumaki. It's Tsutsuki for the last time. Hi Naruto Tsutsuki. Naruto picked up the kunai and tossed all seven kunai and channeled Futon Chakra and fired them off and they hit the tree right behind each target. Ha you missed. Sakura shouted laughing. Check again. Naruto said and Naruka looked at the tree and then the targets. The kunai pierced the target and would have been killed instantly and the heart would have been ripped to shreds, only Futon Chakra could have done this well full marks plus extreme bonus points for using chakra. Nice. Naruto smiled. Okay now for the Tajutsu exam. Naruto and Hinata destroyed the exams one exam at a time, and finally the exams were brought down to the final part. One by one everyone walked out with a headband, and until finally it was Naruto's turn. Naruto Tsutsuki. Naruto walked in and then he looked at Aruka and the others. First the Henge Jutsu. Naruto placed his hands together and transformed into Madara. Ayubi, you are merely a momentary life, a temporary existence of coalesced energy energy that once was a single ultimate form. An unstable force, lacking in intelligence or sapience, you require a guide to show you purpose. That guide is the Acha. The bid you are but slaves to those with blessed eyes. Obey. Um, Madara interesting choice. Hiroka said. Next to Kawarimi Jutsu. Naruto smiled and secretly activated his Rinnegan and kept it hidden with a Jinjutsu. Naruto was waiting, and then Mizuki threw the kunai at Naruto, and just a second before they were to hit him, Naruto activated his Jutsu. Amena Tejikara. Naruto thought and shifted with Mizuki, and he was hit with kunai. Why am I here? Mizuki thought confused. Very nice you were able to switch with Mizuki, and finally the bunch and jutsu. Iruka said. Alright. Naruto said then formed a hand sign. Cage bunch and jutsu. Naruto created three clones. Alright nice work Naruto you passed very good. Iruka handed Naruto the headband and Naruto left. Naruto showed the headband to Hinata, and they both smiled. Time skip the next day. Naruto and the rest of the class were in the room, and after a while Aruka walked in, and Mizuki was absent. Well class you've all made it to the next stage your sensei, team 1 will be. Naruto tuned out and waited for his name to be called. Team 7 will be Naruto Tsutsuki, Sakura Hirono and Sasuke Chiha. Fuck. Naruto cursed as he was stuck with the two words people he hated a lot. Team 7 sensei will Kakashi Haddock. Aruka continued. Okay not as bad but still bad as I am still stuck with those two. The maid is Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inuzuka, and Shino Aburam, and your sensei will be Kurana Yuhi. Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi, and Shikamaru Nara, your sensei will be Asuma Suratobi. Asuma and Kuranai showed up in the next 10 minutes and took their students, and after a while, Naruto was still waiting for Kakashi, and after a while, Naruto was livid, and he was done waiting. Ah fuck this. Naruto was about to storm out when Kakashi walked in, and Naruto saw the man he remembered everyone who his father talked to him about and his students. Well this is a surprise I thought I would have some wet behind the ears, but instead I get the last Ichiha, the Kanoichi of the year, and Naruto the most unpredictable ninja ever, this might be fun. Kakashi said. Well meet me on the roof in 5 minutes. Kakashi shunshined away and left the three genin alone. Well see you later. Naruto kamied away and arrived on the roof. Well you're interesting Naruto. Thanks and say I try, I think I got that from my mother. You know who your mother is what about your father? Yeah I know who my dad is and he's a great man. Yes he is Naruto anyway your teammates are here. Sasuke and Sakura arrived on the roof and glared at Naruto. Well now that we're all here let's break the ice with some introductions. Kakashi said I smiling at his new potential students. WHWH what do you mean introduction sensei? Sakura asked still short of breath. And she's supposed to be the smart one? Naruto asked genuinely confused. I'm under the impression she's only got book smarts and excels in theory. Lobo said. I'd agree with you there Lobo. Naruto said. Yeah introductions you know likes, dislikes and dreams of the future. Kakashi said breaking the mental conversation. Why don't you go first sensei? Sasuke asked. After all what's a better way to get to know our new sensei? Okay fine I am Hada Kakashi. I have no intentions of telling you my likes and dislikes. As for my dream I have few hobbies. 
All we got is his name. Sakura and Sasuke thought. Next Pinky. My name is Sakura Haruno I like. She turns her head to Sasuke and bursts into a fit of giggles. My dream is to she turns her head to Sasuke and bursts into a fit of giggles again. And what do you hate? Naruto Baka. Oh no. Naruto cried dramatically his hand pressed against his forehead. How will I ever live without the approval Sakura Haruno? Naruto said his voice oozing with sarcasm. Next, emo pants. Kakashi said. My name is Sasuke Chiha, I hate a lot of things and I don't particularly like anything, what I have is not a dream because I will make it a reality, I'm going to restore my clan and destroy a certain someone. Sasuke-kun is so cool. Sakura swooned. Finally, the blondie. My name is Naruto Otsutsuki, my likes include Hinata Haim, Hokage Jiji, my sensei and Raymond. My dislikes include a lot of people in this village because they treat me like dirt and people who judge before getting to know someone. My dream is to become Hokage and lead this world to a new era of peace, like the Rakuto Senen wanted to but never got the chance. So an Avenger, a Sage Reborn, and a fangirl this will be weird. Well time for some fun. Kakashi thought. Alright tomorrow we will at training ground 7 at 6am for our first mission. What kind of mission? Naruto asked. Tell us Kakashi Sensei. Sakura says. A survival exercise, however this survival exercise has a 66.6% .6 chance of failing, meaning of the 27 graduates only 9 will make it onto a squad. Kakashi then turns to his students. If I don't pass then Sasuke-kun and I will be separated no, 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 no. Sakura screamed in her head. I'd recommend not eating breakfast unless you enjoy tossing your cookies. Um, have food in my belly and pass or be starving and fail, that fork is a no-brainer. Naruto said quietly to himself. Good thing I'm on a diet to keep my figure for Sasuke-kun. Sakura said quietly I've got this in the bag and that means I'll pass with Sasuke-kun and he'll love me and then we'll get married and I'll help Sasuke-kun revive his clan. Sakura squealed at the thought. He does she live in her own little world. Sasuke thought sweat dropping. That is one fangirl I don't want to be around for long. Naruto thought and then he shunshined away to his house and there he went to a sleep before the test the next morning. Time skip one day later. Naruto was sitting in his bed in the newly refurbished house of his father's. Naruto looked at the clock on his bedside table which read 8.30 am. Hmm. Naruto thought. Kakashi sensei should be there in about half an hour. That gives mess about 25 minutes to have breakfast and get there. Naruto leapt out of bed and grabbed his clothes and went downstairs. After about 16 minutes he had breakfast and his house cleaned, Naruto grabbed his gun by and his kunai and shuriken. All right time to head out. Naruto opened his door and walked to the gate and pressed his thumb on the ceiling matrix, pumping his chakra into the seal, and the gate it opened, and he walked out then shut it, and the seal matrix reactivated, and the gate was resealed. Naruto took his time reaching training ground 7. When he arrived he found an enraged and an impassive Sasuke waiting for him. Naruto Baka. Sakura screamed at the top of her lungs. How dare you be late. If Sasuke-kun fails for this I will kill you. Naruto didn't acknowledge Sakura at all and leaned against one of the logs and closed his eyes and started focusing on gathering nature energy in an attempt to find Kakashi. After he found Kakashi's chakra Naruto just stood still and waited when 9 o'clock rolled around Kakashi shunshined in with an eye smile. Hey sorry I'm late I'm afraid I just got lost on the road of life. Liar. Sakura screeched but Kakashi ignored her and landed in front of the three genin, then he walked over to the logs and placed an alarm clock on the middle one and set it. Alright since you're all here we can get started, here is your test, I have bells and two bento lunches, your objective is to take these bells from me by noon, and whoever doesn't will fail and be tied to this log, and they won't get lunch. As if on cue Sasuke and Sakura's stomachs grumbled, but to Kakashi's surprise Naruto's did not. Okay so I had breakfast, big whoop. Naruto said, Kakashi shook his head. So you disobeyed my orders and ate. You didn't order us not to eat breakfast you just suggested we shouldn't, and I ignored your advice. Well, anyway here are the bells. Kakashi pulled out two bells and showed them to Naruto, Sakura and Sasuke. But sensei there are only two. Sakura spoke. But I Sakura, yes one of you will face for sure. Naruto looked at his teammates then back at his sensei. So in order to get these bells from me come at with the intent to kill. But sensei we could hurt you. Don't worry Sakura I'm a jonin, I doubt cute little jonin could kill me. Naruto growled slightly at this, but no one heard him. And begin. At once Sakura and Sasuke vanished and Naruto exploded into a cloud of smoke. So he was a cage bunch and clever. Kakashi looked around. A shinobi must know how to be invisible in their environment well they've got the basics. Sakura is 5 meters away hiding below a bush Sasuke is about 6 meters away and Naruto is gone. 
Kakashi looked around his eye shooting back and forth. Where could he be? Kakashi muttered to himself only for Naruto's voice to answer. Right behind you. Kakashi whipped around and plunged a kunai into where Naruto's head was only for it to phase right through Naruto, and when the kunai passed through the other side of his head, Naruto grabbed the hand Kakashi had the kunai in, and he smiled. Surprise. Naruto started glowing and Kakashi's visible eye widened, and then Naruto exploded, and when the dust settled Kakashi was burned slightly as he leapt back just as the explosion raced towards him. Bunch and Daibakuha Kakashi said shocked and suddenly a barrage of shuriken flew from the woods, and Naruto came charging in after them, as to not give Kakashi any room to maneuver. Kakashi was hard pressed to block or dodge Naruto's blows, and eventually Naruto landed a strong kick on Kakashi's stomach, sending him flying back. You've got a pretty good Tajutsu style Naruto. Kakashi smiled. Now let's see how you fare in Jinjutsu. Kakashi vanished in a swirl of leaves, and Naruto saw Hinata dead on the ground, a man with an orange mask standing over her laughing as nine Jito Dama floated behind him. Naruto unleashed a blast of chakra, and the image vanished, and Kakashi was gone. Double air Jinjutsu eh? He's good. Naruto tapped into Lobo's chakra and entered his Rakuto mode, shattering the second Jinjutsu like a wall of ice. Naruto looked at Kakashi who was sweating bullets at the amount of chakra Naruto was putting out. So Jinjutsu is no good how's your ninjutsu? Naruto asked as he activated his Rinnegan, then he floated up and held out his hands. Senpo. Inten Raiha. Sage Art. Shadow style thunder blast, Naruto fired out purple lightning from his hands at Kakashi, who started bouncing around like guy on caffeine, but was struck by a good chunk, and he cried out in pain as he got fried. Naruto smiled, but Kakashi turned into smoke, and Naruto looked around as Kakashi jumped at him with a kunai, and Naruto countered by channeling chakra into his left eye. Rimbo. The shadow Naruto blocked the attack, and Kakashi's eye widened in shock. Senpo. Ranton Koga. Sage Art. Gale style fang of light, Naruto, spat out the lightning senbon at Kakashi who barely dodged, but the shot continued and ripped through several trees, crippling them permanently. Kakashi jumped to the ground, and Naruto looked at him with an amused smile. Kakashi lifted his headband and revealed Ibido's eye and Naruto's look hardened. Kakashi blazed through hand signs and ended on Tiger. Hain. Kakaku no Jutsu. And he spat out a huge fireball at Naruto who made a half-tiger seal. Suiten. Sudanha. Naruto exhaled a jet of water which sliced the fireball in two and diverted them around Naruto. Kakashi weaved more hand signs and a ball of lightning formed in hand, but Naruto vanished and had a kunai and the bells in his hand, and Kakashi stared in shock and was reminded of his own bell test so long ago. Nice jutsu Kakashi, I like forward to learning from you. Naruto withdrew his Rakuto moat and his Rinnegan and smiled. So who gets the bells and who fails? Naruto looked at the bells then at his teammates, who had walked out of their hiding places, then back at the bells. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and tossed the bells to Sasuke and Sakura and placed his hands in his pockets. Yes I fail sensei. Naruto said in a nonchalant tone of voice, Kakashi raised an eyebrow and looked at Naruto. Congratulations you all pass. Kakashi I smiled, the smug look that had been on Sakura's face melted as she heard she was stuck with Naruto and his attitude. Meet here tomorrow for our missions as Team 7. Naruto pulled out two silver bells. I guess you want these back. Kakashi's eye widened again, then he looked at Sakura and Sasuke, who had equal looks of confusion on their faces. But if you have the bells then what do Sakura and Sasuke have? Hold that thought. Naruto made a half-tiger seal, and the two bells in Sakura and Sasuke's hands exploded into a blast of paint, and Sasuke was covered in pink paint, while Sakura was covered in green paint. Naruto started laughing as he saw Sasuke's eye twitch. I kill me. Naruto cackled with delight. Naruto Baka. Sakura yelled as she ran at him with a kunai in hand with the intent of killing him, but Naruto vanished in a flash of yellow light. Kakashi's eye widened again as he saw his sensei's infamous jutsu, and he unconsciously touched the small of his back where Minato had marked him years ago. Sensei. Sakura's voice snapped him back to reality. What are you doing? Nothing, Kakashi said. I need to report to Hokage-sama. Hokage's office. Suratobi was filling out paperwork and he looked at the clock and then back at his paperwork. The team senseis should be here any minute. Saratobi thought to himself and, as if on cue, all nine Jounin appeared even Kakashi. Report. Saratobi said and the first Jounin stepped forward. Team 1 failed. He said. Team 2 failed, these girls are a disgrace to Kanoichi everywhere. The second Jounin said. Team 3 failed. The third said. Team 4 failed. The fourth said. Team 5 failed. The fifth said. Team 6 failed. The sixth said. Team 7 passed Kakashi said, but how they passed is very interesting. Report on this afterward. Saratobi said. Team 8 passed, but Hinata is very different than the reports in the academy said. Kurinai said. Report. 
Inada is not by any definition of the word, shy when she was catcalled by Kiba she didn't faint or turn red, she fired a bone at him and said fetch doggy, and she kicked him in that kick, so hurt I heard one of them crack. All the male jonin cringed. Her chakra was above most jowning and even yuhokage sama. She used a combination of cage bunshins and her byakugan to find me during the scouting mission I gave them. Kurinai said shocking the gather jonin. Team 10 passed. Asuma said after his father looked at him. Alright team 7, 8 and 10 report to my office tomorrow morning for missions. Hi, Hokage-sama. Kakashi, Kurinai and Asuma said then the other jonin left, but Kakashi stayed to give his report on Naruto's abilities, while Saratobi listened. Time skip one month later. I hate this cat. Came Sakura's scream one Friday morning as Team 7 completed their 7th D rank of the day. Naruto was snickering as Tor the cat, also known as the bane of Genin clawed at Sakura's face, leaving scratch marks all over her Sasuke seducer, as Naruto knew Sakura called it. Well if you weren't so ugly maybe Tor wouldn't get so scared. Naruto said jabbing at Sakura's looks because it was so easy to rile her up that way. Take that back Naruto baka. Naruto just stuck his tongue out and blew her raspberry. Sakura stop yelling at Naruto. Kakashi said. And Naruto stop antagonizing Sakura. Okay. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, and then he looked at his sensei. Are we going to have an actual training session or one of these useless chores you call mission sensei? Don't worry Naruto we'll do some team training after we get paid for this mission. Kakashi I smiled at Naruto who smiled as he enjoyed training rather than boring missions. After a few minutes they arrived at the Hokage's office, and Team 7 was watching Tora being crushed to death by her owner, the fire daimyo's wife. Sakura was hoping that the woman would kill Tora, while Sasuke was impassive and Naruto felt sorry for the poor cat. The fire daimyo's wife paid one of the chunin at the mission desk, while Saratobi looked over the mission list. So you capture Tora the cat, so now your options are babysitting Lady Shima's child, pulling weeds at a local garden or pulling potatoes at a nearby farm. Saratobi said, but Kakashi stepped in. Actually Hokage-sama, I was planning on taking my team for some time to train. Very well, report tomorrow for more missions. Hi, Hokage-sama. Kakashi looked at his team and they departed for their training ground. Alright, team here is what we're going to work on, Sakura we're going to work on your tojutsu because it's atrocious to say the least. Yes sensei. Sakura nodded. Sasuke, Naruto whatever thing is going on between the two of you needs to stop so, we're going to do a series of trust exercises, and if that doesn't work we'll do something more dramatic. Trust the dobe Sasuke said incredulously yeah, right. For once I'm with Sasuke, I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. Naruto said Kakashi looked at his students with exasperation. Very well then, Kakashi responded. We'll have a spar and I'll set some limits. Naruto, no dejutsu, sinjutsu or kinjutsu. Sasuke no Sharingan or any fire jutsu above B-rank. Naruto sighed and placed his gun by in a storage scroll and handed his sword to Kakashi who took it and the storage scroll. Sasuke and Naruto agreed to have dejutsu seals placed on him. Then they stood on opposite sides of the training ground, the wind blew in the training ground, and Naruto charged Sasuke and threw a punch which Sasuke blocked and countered with a roundhouse kick which Naruto ducked under and replied with a vicious barrage of kicks which Sasuke dodged or blocked. But Naruto threw a high-speed punch which caught Sasuke square in the jaw, and the two separated and Naruto grinned. Looks like first blood goes to me. Naruto said smiling. Wanna give up Sasuke? Sasuke spat out a drop of blood and a tooth. Lucky shot loser, it won't happen again. Sasuke counted then he weaved some hand signs. Katen. Kakaku no jutsu. Sasuke exhaled a fireball at Naruto. Suiten. Suryaden no jutsu. Water molecules gather and a water dragon fired at Sasuke's fireball, and steam erupted over the battlefield. Naruto pulled out a bunch of kunai and threw them at Sasuke who was able to dodge them, but failed to notice the formula on one of the kunai. Naruto appeared right in front of Sasuke a kunai in his hand, Horatian Jiri. Naruto sliced right through Sasuke's kidney, and Sasuke coughed up blood and dropped to the ground, bleeding heavily. Sasuke-kun. Sakura shouted and she ran over to him and tried to stop the bleeding and looked at Kakashi with fear in her eyes. Can't you do anything, sensei. This right kidney has been sliced and a dangerous angle, he's beyond my skill in medical ninjutsu. Kakashi said and Sakura rounded on Naruto a furious look on her face. Naruto Baka. You just had to go and kill Sasuke-kun, you were jealous of his skill and our happiness. Sasuke can still be saved you stupid harpy, I'll be right back. Naruto said then he disappeared in a flash of yellow light, and a second flash a few seconds later signaled his return, and he had Hinata with him, she quickly asses the situation, and started performing medical ninjutsu on it, after a few minutes she spoke. His kidney has been damaged, and there is damage at the cellular level, Naruto-kun did you use Horatian Jiri? Yeah, I did. I take it you coated the blade in Futon Chakra. Yep. 
Hinata continued healing Sasuke and then looked at the others. The damage is severe but not irreversible give me 10 minutes and he'll be fit for active duty again. Kakashi and Sakura sighed in relief and then Kakashi rounded on Naruto a furious look on his face. Naruto that was completely unnecessary and out of line, what would you have done if Sasuke had died? Kakashi shouted. Nothing, Naruto replied, because I knew that wouldn't happen, Hinata Haim is too good at medical ninjutsu and worst case scenario I would have used this. Naruto held out his right hand revealing a white full moon on his palm. Well don't do that again or I'll have your shinobi license revoked. Naruto nodded but didn't say anything. Well, that's enough for one day, once Hinata has healed Sasuke you're all dismissed. A few minutes later Hinata had finished treatment and Sasuke turned and walked home without a word to anyone. Sakura follow him and pester him for a date, only pausing to shoot Hinata and Naruto a dirty look. So we're free for the rest of the day, wanna go somewhere nice. Naruto asked holding his arm out to Hinata which he took and they set off towards the Hokage monuments where they sat on top of the fourth's head where Naruto had a few cage bunch and set up a picnic lunch for them. Show how are things at home? Naruto asked after a while. Great, thanks to that new seal you created that all members of the Hyuga clan wear, the main and branch family is now one big happy family. I even managed to get through Niji's fate controls everything mentality, so he's not a prick anymore, which is his nice bonus. Hinata said. Took you long enough. Naruto poked. Well sorry mister, I've got the power of a god, fear me, but he's not the most agreeable person on the planet. Hinata jabbed back in an annoyed but also amused tone. Naruto and Hinata munched on snacks and joked with each other, after a while Naruto took Hinata back to her house, where he was greeted with smiles. Naruto kissed Hinata and then went off to do his own thing. Time skip one day later. Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke and Kakashi were standing in front of the Hokage while he read off a list of D-rank missions, after the list was done, Naruto spoke up clearly agitated. With all due respect Jiji, these missions we keep doing suck, I would like something more challenging. Baka. Iruka shouted. You're a fresh graduate and you need to build up experience you even think about getting a C-rank. That's up to the Jounin sensei of the team, Iruka. Saratobi said. Well Kakashi, what do you think? Well Hokage-sama, I think that they would be ready to handle anything that would come our way on a C-rank mission. Kakashi said. Very well, send in the client. Just then a man with a fisherman's hat, white shirt and baggy pants holding a bottle of sake in his hand walked in. What the hell is this? The man said drunkenly. I ask for ninja and I get brats. The one with the black hair looks like his puppy just got run over, the girl looks like she would faint if she broke a nail, only the blonde gives the vibe of a trained professional and is the clear leader of the squad. Sakura was livid, not only had this guy insult her and her Sasuke-kun, but complimented Naruto. Sakura was ready to chew this guy out when Naruto spoke. Well I'm flattered that you believe that I am the leader of this squad that honor goes to Kakashi Haddock, the copy ninja, he's an A-rank borderline S-rank ninja, and I could take on a squad of S-rank shinobi and not break a sweat. So bandits and a C-rank mission is child's play, and that's all we're dealing with, right? All right. The man replied. Yeah, he's lying. Naruto thought. Anyway my name is Tazuna and expect you to guard me with your lives. Alright squad, go home and pack for a month-long mission. Kakashi said. Then we'll meet at the gate in one hour. Yes sir. All three members of Team 7 said, but when Sakura Tazuna and Sasuke left Naruto stayed behind. Okajama. Naruto said in a serious tone which caught Siratobi's attention. Yes, Naruto-kun. Siratobi asked. From Tazuna's behavior and attitude, I have reason to suspect his is lying about the intensity of this mission, so I recommend a backup squad just in case things go south. The wise call Naruto, who do you recommend? The mate, they are a scouting team and could help locate enemy units or, Kamisama forbid, Shinobi. Saratobi thought for a minute, then nodded seeing Naruto's logic. Saratobi took out a piece of paper and scribbled a small sentence on it. Take this to Kurana Yuhi and she'll back your team up. Hi, Hokujama. Naruto grabbed the paper and dashed out of the door. A few minutes later Naruto was at teammate's training ground and he smiled at Hinata, snarled at Kiba and waved at Shino who waved back, then he walked over to Kurinai and handed her the paper that Saratobi had written the order on. Kurinai read over the slip of paper and then looked at her team. Teammate, go home and pack for a month-long C-rank mission, prepare for fighting Shinobi, but expect bandits. Kurinai said. Hi, Sensei. All three members of teammate responded and they departed for their respective homes. An hour later both Team 7 and Team 8 was at the gate ready to go. Asked you were leaving Sakura spoke up as she was clearly agitated at the presence of Team 8. What is another squad with us? Sakura asked. We have Sasu-kun. 
I requested a backup squad as I have some suspicions of what we will encounter, plus if we need to track of one of the men that is trying to attack our client or our client, if he was captured teammate is the best tracking squad available. Naruto said and Kakashi smiled at the explanation Naruto had come up with to explain teammate's presence. Well Sasuke-kun could prevent the enemy from capturing our client just because he's so awesome. Naruto rolled his eyes as he learned not to argue with Sakura when she made one of her fanatic claims about Sasuke, but Kiba didn't get the same message and was clearly feeling inadequate. Cell so Sasuke is nothing compared to an alpha like myself. Kiba said with an air of superiority. Sakura round on Kiba furious look on her face. Sasuke-kun is the best shinobi ever and he could beat you with his eyes closed. Considering how much he praised his Sharingan I doubt he would agree with you. Naruto said which of course had Sakura round on him. And you're one to talk Mr. I'll cheat and sly Sasuke-kun open with a kunai because I can't beat him. Naruto inhaled and was ready to unleash a jutsu when he sensed two Chunin level chakra signatures and, as one, he and Hinata fired a jutsu at where they felt the chakra. Senp. Rant and Koga. Naruto fired the lightning senbin blasting the first shinobi in the kidney. The Magarashi no Hakatsu. All killing ash bones, Hinata followed up by striking the same ninja with a bone which sliced right through him, and he watched in horror as he disintegrated with a cry of pain. Gozu. The other shinobi turned furious at the death of his brother. He charged in, but was quickly grabbed by Naruto whose eyes revealed his Rinnegan. Now, who were you after? Naruto asked. Mezu spat in Naruto's face and growled. Screw you, I'm not saying anything so you might as well kill me. Let it never be said that I didn't try the path of peace. Naruto tightened his grip. Ninjendo. Naruto ripped out the soul of Mezu and instantly knew all that Mezu knew. Naruto looked at his team members with a look on his face that meant he was pissed. What's wrong Naruto-kun? Hinata asked. When I thought we would need backup I was right, we're up against a billionaire tyrant drug lord who has hired a high rank shinobi to kill Tazuna. Who is it? Kakashi asked. Zabuza Mamachi the Karigakur no Kijin. Time skipped three days later. After intense discussion and planning team 7 and 8 continued on their C-rank turn A rank mission. As they made their way across the channel Tazuna filled in the blanks about the true nature of Gato and the state of his country. While this was happening Naruto was teaching Hinata the basics of harnessing nature energy. Now the key is releasing your fear and embracing stillness. Naruto said in a hushed whisper as to not let Sasuke hear. I know. Hinata replied as she focused on the feeling of the power all around her, slowly she started to draw the nature energy into herself. As she focused on drawing the energy and Naruto watched for any sign of petrification. After a few minutes purple markings started to appear on her skin similar to Tsunade's Bayakan Jutsu, and finally the same marks that appeared on Naruto's face whenever he used Sinjutsu appeared on Hinata's face, and, just like Naruto, she had mastered it perfectly with no signs of transformation. I did it. Hinata declared happily, and she kissed Naruto who happily deepened it. After the separated Naruto smiled at Hinata happy that she had mastered Sinjutsu just like him. Do you have Haim, and you're an excellent student. Well it's only because I had a fantastic teacher. Naruto rubbed his nose and laughed. Yeah, I'm pretty awesome aren't I? Hinata lightly punched Naruto in the arm and laughed. Yeah, but you have a big ego. No, I don't. Naruto pouted but he was silently laughing. Hinata just giggled and she and Naruto started playing Dejutsu Spy to pass the time. After a little while the group arrived on the shores of Nami no Kuni, and Tazuna thanked the moatman who carried them across the sea. Alright. Let's start off toward my home, it's to the north of town. Tazuna said and the group made its way towards Tazuna's home. Sakura was pestering Sasuke for a date while he continued to ignore her. Naruto, Hinata, Kurinai and Kakashi were all on high alert, trying to sense out Zabuza's chakra, as they knew he would show up eventually. About an hour of walking later they arrived near a small lake, and Naruto sensed two chakra signatures not too far from them, the larger chakra was definitely Zabuza, the other had to be his student, Haku. Naruto looked at where he sensed Zabuza's chakra and inhaled discreetly molding the chakra necessary, then he spun on his heel and then spat out of the lightning senbin with a cry of. Senpo. Rant and Koga. The senbin fired into where he guessed Zabuza's head would be and followed up by charging in with his blade, only to find a scared white rabbit and a crippled tree. Sorry false alarm it's just a rabbit. Naruto held up the rabbit in Kurinai, Kakashi and Hinata caught it the hidden signal, the rabbit was only a distraction as it was a Kawarimi. Naruto and Kakashi saw the blade come flying in from the left, and Kakashi shouted. Get down. Kurinai ducked as did Hinata, Naruto tackled Tazuna to the ground. Kiba dived out of the way, and Sasuke jumped the other way Shino ducked, and Sakura was scared stiff, but, much to Naruto's displeasure, the sword missed her by an inch. The sword embedded itself in the tree in front of them, and Zabuza stood on the blade looking back at the squad before him. 
Naruto looked at Tabuza then at Tazuna and made a split-second decision and placed his hand on Tazuna unlocked eyes with Tazuna. Tazuna-san, do you trust me? What? Tazuna asked. Do you trust me? Naruto repeated. Yeah. Tazuna replied and Naruto activated his EMS. Hamui. The world swirled and Tazuna was absorbed into Naruto's right eye and was gone. Kakashi smiled as he knew that Tazuna was now safe as Naruto had explained to Kakashi the power of his eyes. Boy. Zabuza said gaining Naruto's attention. Where'd you send the old man? Naruto turned to Zabuza a bored look on his face. That's neither here nor there Zabuza Mamachi, what matters now is I know why you're here and I won't let it happen. Naruto reached for his bladed and then drew it in his left hand, his right hand on the lower half of the hilt, and he his back turned to his team and he stared down Zabuza in his reverse gate stance. Zabuza looked at Naruto in cleverly disguised horror as he remembered the last person who took that stance Kashina Yuzumaki. Calm down Zabuza, there is no way he's as good as Kashina was unless this kid is her son no. That's impossible Kashina died 13 years ago with no offspring. He must have learned it from another Yuzumaki, but just to be sure I'll ask. Zabuza thought then he grabbed his blade and jumped down and looked at Naruto. Hey blondie. Yeah? What's your name? Original or adopted? Original. Naruto Yuzumaki. Crap baskets. Zabuza started sweating. Who's your mother? Kashina Yuzumaki. Crap infinity. Naruto looked at Kakashi and the others then back at Zabuza. Nobody interfere, I want to see what Zabuza's made of. Zabuza shoulder his blade and looked at Naruto. You asking for what I think you're asking for? Yeah, Kinjutsu duel, one on one. No jutsu just pure blade to blade the winner walks away with their life. Hinata smiled as she knew this would happen, Kakashi was scared for his student safety, Kurinai was wondering if Naruto had gone crazy, Sasuke was well Sasuke, Kiba was fuming that Naruto was showing off in front of his girl. Sakura was useless, and Zabuza was was nervous and eager to duel Naruto. Okay brat, you want a Kinjutsu duel you've got one. Naruto grabbed his gun by and tossed it to Hinata who placed it on her back, Naruto and Zabuza walked out onto the center of the lake. Naruto looked at Zabuza and Zabuza looked at Naruto, the wind blew, and a small leaf fell between them, and when it hit the surface of the lake, both warriors charged each other, Naruto swiped down whipping his blade across Zabuza's chest, but Zabuza blocked the strike, and Naruto continued his onslaught of attacks. Naruto and Zabuza clashed back and forth, neither landing a blow on the other. Naruto and Zabuza were blurs to anyone but Hinata who tracked the clash, her eyes darting between locations of clashing steel. Kakashi was wide-eyed as he heard the sound of the fight, as he remembered the first time he saw Kashina and Minato spar, after Minato had become Hokage and mastered his Horation, and he watched his sensei's son duel a man with at least twice his experience with the blade. Naruto rolled under Zabuza's next strike and sliced him across the chest. Zabuza swung again and Naruto blocked with his sword, the two blades trembled as both blade masters struggled to push back the other's blade. Zabuza started to lose strength from the blood he was losing and Naruto pressed his advantage and sliced again, scoring a second blow against Zabuza, slicing him across the chest, forming an X pattern with the wounds. Zabuza kicked Naruto's sword out of his hand and Naruto did backflips to avoid the, the blows that Zabuza unleashed, Naruto thrust his hand out and his blade, which had sank to the bottom of the lake, flew back into his hand just in time to help him block Zabuza's next attack, Zabuza's eyes widened in shock at Naruto's action. How'd you do that? Magnetic attraction seals on my right wrist and on the hilt of my sword. Zabuza whistled impressed. You're prepared or anything aren't you? No, I've just seen too many Kenjutsu duels end too quickly because of being disarmed. Naruto smiled back then he sliced at Zabuza who blocked and countered only for Naruto to dodge and thrust his blade into the hole in Zabuza's blade and spun his arm around disarming Zabuza, Naruto held his blade to Zabuza's throat. Yield. Zabuza held his arms up and sank to his knees his eyes closed and he inhaled. I yield I only ask you make it quick. Naruto raised his blade and won, but a hand snatched his hand he was eye to eye with Haku his eyes hard and determined. I won't let you harm Zabuza-sama. Haku said. Haku, let him go. But Zabuza-sama. Haku, I have my pride as a swordsman, I agreed to a kinjutsu duel and lost, when two masters of the blade duel the loser usually loses their life, let go of his arm. But your dream. Will have to be achieved without me. Very well Zabuza-sama, as your tool I will do as you ask. You're not a tool Haku, you are the son I always wanted, I just never let you call me father because I didn't want you to get hurt. Zabuza Sama Haku's eyes welled with tears. Just call me father on time before I die. Thank you for everything father. Haku released Naruto's hand freeing him to finish his strike. Naruto just stood there not moving for a few seconds. What are you waiting for, loser? Sasuke shouted. Kill him. Naruto sheathed his blade and held out his hand to Zabuza. 
I would sooner destroy a stained glass window than a master of the blade such as yourself. Naruto said, Zabuza's eyes widened. For the first time in my life I felt truly alive, with that duel where a single mistake could cost you your life, I couldn't ever describe this feeling to even a lover. You're letting me live you know I wouldn't ever do this if our positions were reversed. I know, but every person in this world has a purpose, something that drives them to become stronger, so I ask you, Zabuza Mamachi, what drives you? I want to free my former village from the tyrant that is our Yande Mizukic. An admirable dream I have here what the Mizukage has done to your former village, so I offer you a deal if you join us and help take down Gato and help us free this land from his grip, I will do whatever I can to help you liberate from the Mizukage's grasp. Do you even realize what you are promising? You'll have to fight the Jinchuriki of the Sambi. Naruto smiled and kneeled down next to Zabuza. I am the Jinchuriki of the Jubi, and Hinata is the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, and both of us have the ability to use the full power of our Biju. Zabuza's eyes widened at what Naruto whispered in his ear. Seriously? Seriously, I can assure you that the Sanbi is no threat to either of us on our own, but together Hinata and I are unstoppable. Zabuza processed the information he was just given, and Naruto stood back up and extended his hand, and after a minute of thinking Zabuza gripped it and smiled at Naruto. You've got yourself a deal, kid. Naruto smiled and signaled Hinata to come over, Hinata looked at Zabuza's wounds and started healing them, a few minutes later Zabuza's wounds were healed, and Naruto grabbed Zabuza's sword and handed it to him. Naruto, Hinata, Haku and Zabuza walked over to the rest of the Konoha Shinobi, and after a brief explanation on Naruto's part, the two former Kiri residents and Team 7 and 8 were on their way to Tazuna's house, after Naruto let him out of his pocket dimension. After another hour of walking they arrived at Tazuna's house where Tsunami greeted them happily and thanked them for returning her father to her safely. Hinata pointed out a pretty serious problem later in the evening. So just how are we going to house 10 extra people when, from my guess, this house can only house 7 people tops? Hinata asked. We've got 3 extra rooms that you can use. Tsunami replied. The only question is how to divide you up. Team stick together. Tazuna suggested, Kiba liked the idea as he could watch Hinata undress, and Sakura also liked the idea for similar reasons, but Naruto shot that idea down. Under normal circumstances I wouldn't have an objection, but knowing a certain member of Team 8, I'm going to have to scrap that idea. I suggest we divide girls and boys Abusa and Haku take one room, and Kakashi, Kiba, Shino, Sasuke and myself take the other. Very well reasoned Naruto, I like it. Kurunai said. Personally I would have liked to share a room with Naruto-kun, but I guess that is a little too much to ask for. Hinata said. HN. Sasuke grunted. For those who don't speak I have a pool up my ass e Sasuke has no objections. Naruto translated Sasuke shot Naruto a dirty look, but Naruto ignored him. Good plan, Naruto. Kakashi I smiled. Yeah not bad, brat. Zabuza said and Haku nodded his head in agreement. Logically speaking that makes sense Naruto-san. Shino responded. Alright that works for me, I'll go set up the rooms. Tsunami said and stood up, but Naruto stood up too gaining her attention. Tsunami said if you could please put this seal on the door of the girl's room, it will help keep out unwanted intruders. Naruto said as he handed a piece of paper, which he had been working on for the last minute, to her while shooting a look at Kiba that clearly said try anything, and you're dead. Tsunami nodded and walked upstairs, Kakashi looked at his team and spoke. Alright team 7 follow me, we're going to do some training. He may go with them, I will accompany Tazuna to go shopping for dinner supplies. Kurunai said. Hi sensei. All present Genin responded and they followed Kakashi outside. Kakashi walked them to a small clearing and turned to face them. Alright, today I'm going to start you off by learning your elemental affinities. Kakashi said, and then he pulled out seven slips of chakra paper and handed one slip to each Genin. Naruto and Hinata knew what to do, but Sakura spoke confused. Sensei, how does a piece of paper tell us our elemental affinities? And here I thought she was supposed to be intelligent. Lobo spoke to Naruto. Tell me about it. Kurama's voice echoed in both Naruto and Hinata's heads. I don't think she read anything more than the basics of chakra to pass the academy. Hinata responded. Naruto. Hinata. Kakashi shouted gaining their attention. What? Naruto asked. Care to explain the nature of these papers? The paper come from a tree that was fed chakra its whole life, and as such it responds to the chakra nature of whoever holds it. Naruto explained. Correct. Kakashi smiled. And based on your affinity the paper will react differently, if you have fire it will burn, water it will get wet, wind will cut it in half, lightning will crumple the paper, and earth will cause it to disintegrate. Hinata finished. Very good you too. Kakashi looked at the six genin before him. I'll give a demonstration. Kakashi held the paper in his right index and middle finger, and he channeled chakra into the paper, and it crumpled. 
As you can see I have a lightning affinity, most shinobi at genin rank have only one affinity, unless they have an elemental keke genkai, you can develop a second affinity, but most don't until they are jonin rank. What exactly does knowing your affinity do for you? Sakura asked. When you know your affinity you can incorporate it into your knowledge and learn both ninjutsu and tojutsu accordingly. Hinata explained. Correct again Hinata. Kakashi said, now let's start with Shino. Shino channeled Chakrai on the slip of Pur, and it disintegrated. Seems Shino has an earth affinity, I know several Dota ninjutsu I can teach you. I also know a few as well that I'd be willing to teach you as well. Naruto said. Next Sakura. Kakashi said and Sakura channeled Chakra into the paper, and it burst into flames. Alright fire element, I'll be able to help with that too. Kakashi looked at Kiba, and he channeled Chakra into the paper, and it crinkles. Lightning, I'll be able help you with that more than any other element, I won't be able to teach you my signature jutsu though because you lack a requirement to cancel out a side effect of the jutsu, next Sasuke. Sasuke channeled chakra into the slip of paper, and it crinkled and then burst into flames. Lightning and fire affinites, very interest to at genin rank. Sasuke kun that was amazing. Sakura praised. Hinata you're next. Hinata channeled chakra into the paper, and it got drenched and then crinkled, and a small spark danced across the paper, and lastly it burst into flames only to be extinguished, because how wet the paper was. Water, lightning and fire, explains why you have so much trouble with the tradition Jaikin. The yeah, lightning defeats earth which beats water, and traditional Jaikin is earth-based. Hinata said. Well color me impressed, three affinities, and I wonder how your Byakugan works with tunnel vision. I don't know. Well last but not least, Naruto. Naruto channeled his chakra, and it split into four pieces one caught fire, the second got wet, the third disintegrated, and the fourth crumpled to a small ball. Whoa, an affinity for all five elements with wind and lightning being your strongest, never seen that before. It's because of my dejutsu. Naruto said and closed his eyes and activated his rinnegan while opening them. The rinnegan. Oh those eyes again, so that's what they're called. Yeah, they are the most powerful dejutsu of the Otsutsuki clan, and its brother is called the Tensigan. Well I'll create some cage bunchons and start you all on the begins of elemental manipulations, Sakura your exercise is to take a bucket and bring it to a boil with only your chakra, to master this exercise you must do this in under 30 seconds. Shino your exercise is to take a rock and turn it to dust without crushing it in your palm. Sasuke you have two options, boil the water or turn on the light bulb, with only using lightning chakra. Naruto. I already know how to do all the exercises for all five elements. Kakashi raised an eyebrow and pulled out a bucket of water, a light bulb picked up a rock and handed Naruto two leaves. Naruto walks over to the bucket of water and places his hand on it and channeled fire chakra into it and in five seconds it was boiling, Naruto grabbed the rock and held his palm out flat and channeled his earth chakra into the rock, turning it to dust, then grabbed the first leaf and pulled the water out of it and let it run up his arm. Next he grabbed the light bulb and channeled lightning chakra and it lit up and finally he picked up the last leaf and split it in half with wind chakra. Very good, you've mastered the basics, how how about something more advanced? Naruto simply held out his hand and created a Rasengan, and then channeled Wind Chakra into it, creating his father's Jutsu in its complete form. Futon. Rasengan. Kakashi's visible eye widened at the Jutsu. Why you completed Sensei's Jutsu? Completed and perfected. Show me please. Okay. Naruto held his hand up and expanded the Jutsu into its final form. Futon. Rasen Shuriken. Naruto tossed it and it ripped through several trees, and Kakashi uncovered his Shuringen, then the Rasen Shuriken exploded in a blast of wind chakra, Kakashi watched in awe as the Rasen Shuriken tore the land apart. The number of individual attacks was almost infinite, even with my Shuringen I can't count them all. Kakashi looked at Naruto's shock in his face. Awe-inspiring sensei's legacy completed before my very eyes. Yeah, but I've got several more I could show you. More. Yeah watch this. Naruto formed another Rasengan and started to channel lightning chakra and the Rasengan, and it turned bright blue, and the sounds of thunder echoed, then it started to take the form of a bright blue spear, which Naruto gripped in his hand, the tip danced with lightning chakra. Raten. Raisin Kaminari Yari. Lightning style. Spiraling thunder spear, Naruto gripped the chakra attack and hurled it at a tree, and it impaled it, and the force of the attack propelled it back towards the destroyed clearing, and then exploded in a tower of blue lightning that stretched to the heavens. When it died down everything that was in the clearing was annihilated, and there was a hole that was 100 feet down and was 50 feet wide. Kakashi was speechless as he witnessed an extremely powerful Raten Jutsu that Naruto had invented. Such power, that technique is easily S rank or even higher. Thanks and say, if you want, for a few lightning Jutsu of your own, I could teach it to you. Why you teach me that Kakashi was shocked and Naruto nodded. You've got yourself a deal. 
Naruto smiled and laughed at the look of pure butthurt that Sasuke was giving him. To think he unleashed 2s rank jutsu in quick succession and he isn't even winded. Kakashi looked at the sky. Sensei you'd be very proud of how far your son has progressed. Loser, I demand you teach me that jutsu. Sasuke said speaking in his arrogant tone. No. Naruto simply said and Sasuke's face turned red with rage. That jutsu was the complete form of the late Yandame's Rasengan and costs more chakra than most jonin have in their prime to activate, let alone use. Then teach me the Rasengan. No, I'm not some jutsu library for you to explore for your stupid revenge. Naruto and Hinata walked away to practice Hinata's Senjutsu and perfect a combo attack. A few hours later Naruto and the others were sitting around the dinner table joking and laughing, or to be more accurate Naruto and Hinata were while Kiba just shook his head at his friend's antics after finally accepting that Naruto loved Hinata and she loved Naruto and there was nothing he could do to change that. Shino was stoic, but if one listened closely to Shino you would hear him chuckling, Sakura was pestering Sasuke for a date while the latter ignored her. After a while Tazuna's grandson, Inari, spoke with anger in his voice. How can you all sit there laughing when you're all going to get killed by Gato? Kid, we're shinobi and Naruto and Hinata are the most powerful shinobi ever born. Kiba said. Yeah right, Gato will just kill you, no one knows what it's like to suffer. The room's temperature plummeted as Naruto stood up cold fury etched into his face. Kid, you'd better be very careful who you sat that to. Naruto said. I happen to know for a fact that four of us at this table have suffered more than you could imagine. Sasuke here lost his whole family in one night, slaughtered by his older brother, Kakashi Sensei lost his teammate, Abito Uchiha, in his first ever Jonin mission, and then a few months later he killed his other teammate, Rin Nahara, because an enemy shinobi used a Kawarimi with her at the last second, and she took the blow that would have ended the enemy's life. Haku over here had to kill his had to kill his own father in self-defense, because he was going to be killed, because he was viewed as an abomination and a demon, just because he had a Keke Genkai. Then there is me well let's leave it at I was lucky to get a decent meal once or twice a week, so don't come crying to me when life gives you crap, because there is always someone who's had it worse than you and Kami-sama help the person who's had it worse than me. Naruto turned on his heel and walked upstairs to go to bed. There was an awkward silence after that for a little while, then Sakura broke it. The Kashi sensei was what Naruto Baka said true. Sakura asked. The part about me was mostly true, except the part about how Rin was killed, it wasting a Kawarimi that caused Rin to take that killing blow, she jumped in front of the shinobi that my jutsu was aimed at, she chose to die by my hand to save our home. Kakashi said a tear in his visible eye. The part about my past was true, I ended the life of my own father. Haku said. The Ichiha incident is well known to most Konoha shinobi and even shinobi outside Konoha I, for one, was shocked when I heard about it, but I didn't bother with it as was training Haku. Zabuza said. Hey and what about the last part? Sakura asked. Surely he made that up. Hinata scoffed at that next remark. It was an extremely sugar-coated version. Hinata said. Naruto-kun was all but ignored by most of the village, he was scorned and unwanted. Because of his stupid pranks, right? Wrong. He did it so someone would acknowledge his existence, he willing accepted negative attention because it was that or be ignored. Yeah well, he deserved it. Deserved it Hinata howled with outrage. What child deserves to have their entire existence be viewed as worthless, to have people calling for their death mere hours after losing their parents and being welcomed into this world? Hinata glared at Sakura. I think the Yandane gave his life to protect people like you the Yandane wanted Naruto-kun to be hailed as a hero not treated like scum, every breath you and about 95% of the village takes bits on that sacrifice. How do you know the Yandane would want some no-name orphan to be treated like a hero? Hinata's eyes instantly turned red and gained slits. Because I was there when the Yandane drew his last breath and made that wish. Hinata said in a distinctly male voice and every word echoed with rage. Kakashi and Kurinai instantly recognized the foul chakra that Hinata was now radiating. Kayubi. Kakashi and Kurinai thought in horror. I was there when your mother howled for his death, I was the one who kept him alive when he was dying from malnutrition because he couldn't even get a meal from the orphanage he lived in. I was the one who saved him when he tried no less than 45 different times he tried to kill himself. You should be bound to him and giving him anything he asks for because it was his will and his determination that stopped him from releasing me and letting me destroy your precious little village with no Yandame to die to stop me and no person want to hold me back and seal me away again. Believe me, I made attempting for him to set me free, I even went as far to offer him a place in the kingdom of Kitsune and raise him as my own, granted I was lying, but now I wish I had been serious when I made that offer. I may be a demon, but we never do the horrible things that your village has done to a child, we of the Kitsune consider our children especially precious. WWW who are you? Sakura asked trembling in fear. 
Someone you should fear, I hate you with such undying rage that you are only second to that despicable Madara Cheha and his wretched clan of his with their thrice blasted eyes. Using Hinata's body, Kurama sat down and a small smile played at his lips. Personally I'm going to have to thank Itachi Acheha for wiping out that clan, save me a whole bunch of time, effort and energy, although I would have killed every single Acheha and then killed myself to rid the world of the stupid Sharingan if I were him. That clan has been cursed since the day it was created and only survived because I didn't kill Indra before he had a kid. Sasuke was red with rage and leapt to his feet and glared at Kurama. How dare you? My clan was massacred and you sit there and condemn every Acheha to the fate they got, you'd love it if I got killed and my proud clan was extinct. You hate the Sharingan, well I'll give you a reason to fear it. Sasuke growled then he activated his Sharingan, faster than anyone could blink Kurama had grabbed Sasuke by the throat, rage etched into Hinata's usually calm face. If you dare activate those eyes in my presence again I will rip them out of your skull before I tear you apart limb from limb. You got that you piss poor excuse of a shinobi Kurama roared blasting Sasuke with 10% of his max killer intent, which caused Sasuke to go into cardiac arrest, and he started foaming from the mouth. Anada walked away Kurama still in control of her body, and Kakashi ran over and started to restart his heart, and after a few minutes Sasuke was breathing again, and Kakashi walked upstairs and grabbed Hinata's shoulder, and she looked at him still with Kurama's eyes. That was way out of line. Kakashi said. Considering what's running through Hinata's mind right now you're lucky I took over when I did or you'd be looking for two new members of Team 7. Kurama countered and Kakashi's eye widened, but Kurama wasn't done. Hinata and Naruto are closer than you imagine and as such are very protective of each other and anyone who threatens one in the other's presence isn't going to be around for much longer, let me show you. Flashback Kurama's perspective. Naruto was standing in front of the cage that represented my seal, I was on my stomach my tail swishing behind me. I was enraged at this boy who was all that stood between me and Breedom. Father's reincarnation or not I trusted humans before and every time they turned on me. It didn't help the boy's case that he had the powers of that blasted Madara and of the equally annoying Hashirama. Naruto. I growled at him as usual. Where are the real you go, I don't sense him. I'm right here, standing in front of you. Naruto countered as he floated up towards the cage and ripped of the tag of the seal. What are you plotting? Naruto lifted up his shirt and revealed the sealing formula on his stomach. Naruto twisted the seal and opened the gate to my seal, and a hand of chakra grabbed my throat and held me down, and the voice of that Hinata girl spoke. Remember Naruto-kun, chakra can only be grabbed by chakra, to tame this storm you must take the chakra out of the Kyubi, but remember when you try to take his yours could be stolen as well, and you know what will happen then. I know. Naruto said charged me and it instantly clicked. Oh I see you're planning to gain control over my power. I growled and then stood on my rear legs and gathered my tails to a point over my head. And so you team up with that little girlfriend of yours to stop me. You the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, that's pitiful. Then the chakra for a Biju Dama and once ready I swallowed it and fired it at Naruto, but he was ready and formed the snake seal. Mokuten. Makujin no Jutsu. The wooden golem grabbed my blast and shoved it back in my face, and I braced myself for the explosion which ripped apart the ground. I shook myself off and Naruto jumped out of the dust of Rasengan in his hand, and I swung my tail at him to swat him out of the air, but my tail passed right through him. Naruto raised his hand, and the Rasengan expanded and slammed into my face blasting me back, then something kicked me in the face, and I was sent flying. When I looked at Naruto he was floating above me, his Rinnegan activated several huge meteors around him. They're a little bigger and more solid than raindrops. Naruto thrust his hand down, and the rock started to fall towards me. Don't underestimate me. I roared and fired several Biju Dama and eradicated the meteors. With the dust blocking Naruto's vision I swatted him out of the air, and he crashed against the wall and slumped to the ground, I seized the opportunity and grabbed Naruto's chakra with mine, and I smiled. You are nothing compared to me, I will enjoy control over your body, and the first thing that I will do is kill that Hinata of yours. I laughed cruelly, but then I felt it a dark emotion spark in Naruto's heart, and I knew it all too well, rage Naruto's chakra blasted to life, and instantly I knew I had made a huge mistake. The look on Naruto's face was murderous, and I remembered the last time I'd seen a face that angry shortly after my creation my father had heard that someone had killed his wife, I never wanted to see that face again, and yet, here it was again, and I had only one thought in my head. Oh shit. Naruto got to his face his Rinnegan glowing, and a blue ethereal warrior sprung to life. I don't care who you are or what kind of power you have you threaten Hinata high man. Naruto glared at me loathing in his eyes. I will destroy you. I backed up in horror as I tried to retract my chakra, but Naruto's held mine still. This Susanoo is destruction itself. The warrior drew its blade. Shatter and be destroyed. And one swipe of the bladed and I was nearly blasted apart. 
Naruto took a walked forward, and with every step he took forward, I took a step backward. Naruto held out his hand, and the Susanoo's hands formed to gigantic Rasengan, and the one on the left transformed into a bladed Rasengan in the shape of a shuriken, the one on the right took the shape of a lance. Futon. Rasen shuriken. Naruto hurled the Rasengan at me, and when it hit me and exploded, the pain was indescribable, every cell was being sliced at, and I roared in pain, but Naruto wasn't done when his Rasen shuriken cleared his race and Kaminari Yari was right in front of my face, giving me no time to react. If I thought the Rasen Shuriken was painful the Rasen Kaminari Yari was worse, I was in so much pain I felt that my entire existence was going to fade away, and Naruto was still not done. The Susanoo stabbed me in the gut with its blade and pinned me to the ground. The warrior grabbed my neck, and his chakra grabbed a tighter hold on mine, and started to drag it out of me, I tried to fight it, but Naruto Susanoo channeled lightning chakra into its blade, disrupting my focus. Naruto ripped out my chakra and jumped off, my chakra ripped from me, I felt so weak, powerless, but I wasn't done yet, getting to my feet, I channeled all the chakra that I could muster, and formed a huge biju dama. You have infuriated me Naruto. I roared and fired it at him, but Naruto absorbed the attack. Impressive, even when I have taken almost all your power you had that much left to try and kill me with, but no matter how much power you have, it is still insignificant compared to mine. Naruto twisted his hand, and then I was locked behind the seal once more. Forgive me Kayubi. Then flash back in Karama's perspective. See what I mean? Was that all real? Kakashi asked. Every part, he kicked my ass. I am only doing what I can to help both Naruto and Hinata my destructive past and rage is done. So you're not going to kill anyone? No. Oh, okay then. Kakashi let the Karama controlled Hinata to walk to her room, then she closed the door, and in a few minutes the demonic killer intent was gone. Time skip one week later. The two teams, Zabuza and Haku were walking down the bridge, unsurprisingly Gato was there within an army of thugs, what did surprise Naruto was two members of the Akatsuki were standing there. Sasuke's eyes widened with rage as he saw before him the man whom he had sworn to kill Itachi Ichiha. Itachi. Sasuke growls. Hello Sasuke. Itachi said in his emotionless monotone voice, then turned to Naruto, and a small smile played at his lips. I think Naruto said smiling. A cheap douchebag like Gato would hire the most expensive forces to kill one bridge builder. Oh I hired the Akatsuki, but their payment will be you. Gato said smiling cruelly. Well they handle you my bandits will kill the bridge builder and capture the women, they will make fine additions to my brothels. Naruto blasted a wave of killer intent which hit the bandits and Gato scared stiff. You're dead Gato you just don't know it yet. Sasu charged Itachi, but the elder Ichiha backhanded his sibling and looked at Naruto. Naruto, I suggest you come with me. Itachi said. Don't make it hard on yourself kdit and come quietly. Kissum said smirking, Naruto walked forward his eyes closed, and when he got within arm's length of Itachi Naruto punched him so fast the Sharingan user couldn't react. Kissum slashed with Samahada only to be intercepted by a bone which Hinata had in her hand and a bored look on her face. I take it you want to fight Kissum then, Hinata Haim? Naruto asked. Yeah, you got to test your medal against a seven ninja swordsman, now it's my turn. Hinata replied. Fair enough, just don't go overboard. Says the man who invented a quadruple S rank jutsu. Oh you're mean. Pain. Ryukan no jutsu. A wave of fire rocketed towards them, and Naruto pushed Hinata out of the way, and let the attack pass right through him, Sasuke had fired the jutsu in an attempt to kill Itachi, but naturally, the clan killer dodged easily, and as a consequence, he whipped out the army of thugs and Gato, who screamed in pain as he and his thugs were turned to ashes. Sasuke. What the fuck? Naruto shouted, when the smoke cleared Naruto was uninjured but pissed. The only one who is going to kill Itachi is me. Sasuke said then charged Itachi, who backhanded Sasuke off the bridge. Now that the annoyance is out of the way I can continue on my mission. Itachi said looking at Naruto who looked back and smiled. Let's see who's better with Indra's gift, me or you. Naruto said as he activated his Sharingan and looked at Itachi whose eyes had widened in shock. Naruto charged in wordlessly and threw a punch which Itachi blocked and countered with a pick which Naruto dodged and countered with a palm heel strike which caught Itachi off guard and beat bend over, then Naruto followed up with kick to the back of the knee and jumped back and weaved hand signs. Katen. Kakaku no jutsu. Itachi dodged the incoming fireball and countered with his own with Naruto defeated with a water dragon. Hinata meanwhile had kiss him on the ropes, as the few Mizubunshins that he had hoped to use to gain an advantage over the young Hayuga were quickly vaporized by Hinata's bone attacks, and he had tried to fight with water jutsu, only for Hinata to turn them against him. Hinata and Naruto stood back to back neither taking their eyes off their respective opponents. Something's not right. Hinata said. I know they have too little chakra to be the real deal, and there aren't any other signatures with their feel to them. So they aren't clones so, what are they? 
I don't know but I'm ending this. Naruto activated his Rinnegan and jumped onto a nearby tower. Rimbo. Hengoku. Wheel Grave. Border Jail, Naruto's four shadows shot off towards the two Akatsuki members, and they punched them rupturing several internal organs, and sent Itachi flying into a girder which impaled him, and Kisum was sent into a bone that was protruding from Hinata's palm. Naruto looked at Itachi who was disintegrating into a shinobi with a mist headband, and so did Kisum. What just happened? Hinata asked. I don't know, I've never seen this jutsu before. Naruto looked at the pile of ashes that was Gato and his thugs. So Gato's dead, wanna go raid his vaults. Time skipped three days later. Naruto and the gang were in front of Inari, his family and the citizens of Nami, no kuni at the end of the completed bridge. Thank you all so much for everything you've done. Tazuna said over the last few days the shinobi had raided Gato's vault and divided Gato's wealth among the people, and even after the subtraction of a A rank mission fee the families of Nami had returned to their previous state before Gato's takeover. Well we must be off. Naruto said, and then the shinobi group left. What should we name the bridge? Tsunami asked. How about the super awesome Tazuna Bridge? Tazuna smiled only to be hit in the head with a frying pan. How about the Great Naruto Bridge? Inari asked and the people cheered at that name. Hino has Hokage office. Saratobi was staring at the group of four shinobi before him as Kakashi, Sakura, Sasuke, Kurenai, Kiba and Shino had all been dismissed. You just love giving me paperwork, don't you Naruto? Saratobi asked while rubbing his temples, Naruto simply grinned. So let me get this straight, you want to hire Naruto and Hinata for highest rank mission, which is to overthrow the Yande Mizukage in exchange all you want me to do is make an alliance with Kiri when this is over. Yep, that pretty much covers it. Zabuza replied. Then I'm going to impose that Naruto and Hinata wear masks to hide their identities. Deal. Zabuza said and then Saratobi handed Hinata and Naruto masks that had been taken from root agents, Naruto put a Jinjutsu seal on his mask that turned his hair black to further hide his identity. Let them back here in one month's time for the Chunin exams. By your command Hokage-sama. Naruto, Hinata, Zabuza and Haku left without another word. After ten days of travel Zabuza and the others arrived in Kiri, and in an instant they were swarmed by Kiri Anbu, who had swords drawn. Zabuza Mamachi by order of Yugurasama you are hereby placed under arrest. The clear leader said, Naruto and Hinata sprang into action taking out the Anbu in mere seconds. Let's keep going. Naruto said and soon the group of four reached the rebel camp. They were encircled by shinobi, but a woman with auburn hair stepped forward shock evident on her face. Zabuza the woman said shocked as she looked at the Karigakur no Kijin. Well, well, May looking lovely as ever. Zabuza said flirtatiously. What are you doing back here? May asked then she saw Naruto, Hinata and Haku. And why did you bring children? Naruto growled at this obvious underestimation of his power. These children have full control over their biju numbering 9 and 10. Naruto growled May's eyes widened. I brought Haku because he is my son in all but blood and I want to help. Zabuza said. Before I agree to your help I need to know your abilities. May said, Hinata looked at May and spoke. Before we explain our abilities we must converse in private. Hinata said. Very well, follow me. May signaled the four shinobi to a command tent. Naruto placed his hand on the wall of the tent and a seal array spread around the tent. What did you just do? I have isolated us in time and space, here we can talk. Naruto responded. So what are your abilities? I wield the Sharingan and its advanced form, the Iron no Manjekyo, in its final form, the Rinnegan, in addition I can use several Jukin Ninjutsu, one of which can be used by my partner. As previously stated I am the Jinchuriki of the Juubi, and am able to use its power to the fullest, as such all Ninjutsu is useless against me, so is Jinjutsu. As far as to Jutsu goes only my teammate or a master of the Hachiman Tonkin could hope to wound me let alone kill me. I am also a master of Hashirama's Mokuten, as such no Jinchuriki or Biju can fight me. Naruto concluded, and then Hinata stepped forward. My abilities are as follows, my Byakugan, and its abilities are pretty well known as its abilities, as my partner said, I am able to use one very power Juken Ninjutsu with my eyes in their advanced form known as the Tensigan, I have strength that surpasses a rival's Tsunade of the Sanin, but I am not quite sure as I have never tested myself against her. I wield a Suetan affinity not seen since the days of the Nidame Hokage, my Katen affinity is pretty strong, but not as strong as my Suetan or Raten affinity, so here in Kiri I can utilize those two styles of ninjutsu to its fullest. I am also skilled in Kenjutsu as is my partner, though he is the better of the two of us, I am also a Jinchuriki, and my Biju isn't as strong as my partner's, but he's still up there, and, like my partner, I have full control over my Biju. Hinata concluded. 
but my man Jekyo and the Kyubi with us were unstoppable, I can encase the Kyubi in an armor that not only heightens its defenses and offensive abilities, but protects it from suppression attacks such as Hashirama's Mokuten. Together the two of us are completely unstoppable. Well let's get going. Mei said in a numb acceptance and thanked Kami-sama for the help she had received. With that Naruto and the others walked out when they were intercepted by a ninja with wounds covering his arms and legs. Mei-sama. The ninja bowed. The Mizukage has us surrounded with three separate armies, we only have enough to combat one army, I'm afraid that this is the end of our rebellion. Not if I can help it. Naruto and Hinata said then dashed off toward where they each sensed the two opposing armies, and, as one, they landed in front of each army. But Naruto. Naruto faced the army before him, a cruel smile tugging at his lips, not that that his foes could see it. So the monsters have only sent one person to fight us, this will be easy. One Jonin said as Naruto walked forward his chakra levels growing as he took his steps, the ninja next to the one who spoke recoiled in horror. Dude what's wrong with you? The nin shuddered as he continued to back up. H his chakra. What about it? He's at Biju levels and still rising. What? See he's smart. Naruto said and he formed a single hand sign. Katen. Goku Mikyaku. Fire style. Great fire annihilation, Naruto exhaled a huge wave of fire, to which several nin countered with several cries of. Suiten. Sujin Heki. Water style. Water wall, several Kirinin spat out walls of water to count the wave of fire, Naruto rushed in weaving more hand signs. Pain. Rikse aim. Fire style. Meteor storm, Naruto gathered the heat of the atmosphere, and several large fireballs rained from the sky, wiping out several battalions of shinobi, Naruto followed up with several furious attacks jumping between sections, taking out anyone who attacked him. One ninja threw a kunai with two paper bombs which Naruto caught ripped off one, slapped it onto one shinobi, then threw it back at the shinobi who threw it. A few seconds later and a several shinobi exploded. Naruto continued to decimate the forces that attacked him without mercy, eventually one shinobi swung his sword multiple times, and Naruto dodged, then grabbed the man's throat. Do you want to dance too? Naruto snapped the man's neck and activated his Rinnegan, and jumped into the air and held up his hand, and a large black sphere separated into several smaller spheres, then Naruto clapped his palm. Chibaku Tensei. Catastrophic planetary devastation, huge slabs of rock and earth gathered until huge cluster of meteors floated above the shinobi. They're little bigger and more solid than raindrops. Naruto thrust his hand down, and the meteors started to fall upon the shinobi before him. Just then several Biju Dama attacked the meteors, wiping out several of them, but many more remained and consequently eliminated several shinobi battalions. Sangushim. A gigantic coral reef sprang to life, and Naruto looked to see a man with a head of messy gray hair, pink pupilous eyes, and what seems to be a stitch-like scar running from under his left eye, all the way down his cheek. He wore a gray, sleeveless shirt with a Karigakur forehead protector attached to the front, short-sleeved mesh armor, over which he also wears a green poncho, along with a turquoise sash around his waist, paired with a green apron over his pants. He wears a pair of brown boots, and on his back, he carried a staff-like pole weapon with uneven-sized hooks with a green flower on the larger end. Who are you? The man asked. Mizukajama. Several shinobi cried in relief. Naruto floated down and looked at the man and remembered what Isobu had told him. Igura, the Yande Mizukage, I'm honored. Naruto says chuckling. How do you know my name? Yagura asked. You think I wouldn't know the names of my fellow Jinchuriki? You're Jinchuriki. I am, before we fight however, I have to ask you a question. Why all this hypocrisy? Hypocrisy? You and I share a similar burden and know the suffering associated with being a Jinchuriki, we are hated and scorned for something we ourselves had no control over, the same thing could be said of the Keke Genkai users, they have a unique ability, and yet you try to kill them because of it, so again I ask, why all this hypocrisy? Doesn't matter. You are a threat to my village and I will eliminate you as such, I won't hold back. With that Yugura charged Naruto who grabbed his gun by off his back and blocked the strike and draw his blade, and countered with a swipe at Yugura's head, who ducked and kicked at Naruto, who let the attack pass right through him. Yugura jumped back and broke the Jinjutsu he thought he was under. Naruto sheathed his sword and made a single-handed hand sign. Hain. Ryu and Hoka no Jutsu. Naruto spat out several large dragon head-shaped fireballs at Yugura, who created an aqua mirror, which made a Naruto which fired the same jutsu, and both attacks raised an eyebrow, and Yugura weaved more hand signs. Suiten. Mizu Dangan Danmaku. Water style. Water bullet barrage, Yugura spat out a large line of water bullets, but Naruto took a defensive stance with his gun by, and when the water bullets hit Naruto murmured. Ichihageshi, Ichiha reflection, the bullets were reflected and fired back at their created who couldn't dodge. Yugura unleashed Isobu's power to protect himself and then transformed into Isobu. Behold the power of the Sanbi. 
Naruto raised an eyebrow and stood stock still which Igura thought was Naruto frozen with fear. Rough sea plume, an. Couldn't find Japanese version of this jutsu, Yagura fired the huge jet of water at Naruto who raised a hand and formed a Rasen Shuriken, but added fire and earth chakra to it. Senpo. Yoten Rasen Shuriken. Naruto tossed the flaming shuriken, and it tore through Yagura's attack and exploded right in Yagura's face, which caused him to roar out in pain. Not done yet. Naruto weaved more hand signs. Sen. Namjinman. Sageard. Gate of the Great God, the Red Tori gates crashed onto Isobu's tails. FKTM. Head seal, a fourth gate crashed onto Isobu's neck immobilizing it. W what the Naruto made the snake hand sign. Mokuten. Mikuryu no Jutsu. The wooden dragon burst from the ground and wrapped around Isobu. Yugura struggled against his bonds, but it was no use. H how. You think I wasn't prepared to fight you? You're naive. Naruto thrust his hand out and a purple chain of chakra with a head and mouth wrapped around Isobu's neck. What are you doing? Dragging the Sanbi into myself, as I need it for my plans, unfortunately for you this will mean your death. Who are you? I am a man long forgotten by history Madara Che. Naruto pulled on the chain and ripped Isobu from Yagura and locked it away within himself. When the smoke cleared Yagura was in the indent left by Isobu and he was dead. Naruto looked at the remaining Kiri Shinobi. You are powerless against me and your leader lies dead, well I have no interest in this civil war of yours, I suggest you give up, if you want any chance of surviving an attack, I will inevitable start when I have what I need. Naruto vanished in a swirl of fire, leaving behind a broken and defeated army of the once proud Yugura. Rebellion Camp. Naruto reappeared and saw the bloodline users cheering and hugging each other. Naruto round confused at all the celebration and he walked over to Hinata who was glaring and unleashing killer intent on anyone who tried to hit on her. Explanation, please. Naruto said wrapping his arm around Hinata. The Mizukage's forces surrendered after witnessing the death of their leader and the power you displayed. Hinata said and she hugged Naruto and smiled though Naruto couldn't see it. But for every two lives I saved I ended one today. Naruto said sadly. I know you're sad, but some things can't be avoided. Hinata hugs Naruto again who takes the comfort in the arms of his girlfriend. Time skip three days later. Naruto and Hinata had stayed a little while longer to help Kiri undergo repairs. Naruto met with Mei and the Shinobi Council of Kerr and informed them of his decision to make Haku the Jinchuriki of Isobu, though he didn't tell them about Isobu's name, Haku accepted his role as a Jinchuriki and started undergoing training to learn how to work with Isobu. Naruto and Hinata prepared to leave when Naruto felt the awareness of a third mind at the edge of his consciousness. Naruto edged closer to it and instantly started hearing a voice that he knew wasn't Lobos or his. Sama it appears that the Kayubi Jinchuriki has killed the Yande Mizukage and placed the Sanbi in a different Jinchuriki. The voice said. Do you know the name of the new Jinchuriki Zetsu? A different voice asked. No pain Sama if he told anyone he's keeping it very quiet. I see, does anyone ease have any other new about the Kayubi Jinchuriki? Naruto pushed himself deeper into this new presence, but not enough that he or she would notice, suddenly he found himself in a room with eight holographic figures, several Naruto didn't recognize, but he saw the unmistakable forms of Itachi and Kisum. I do, leader Sama. Itachi spoke. Speak, Itachi. Replied a man with a rinnegan which almost caused Naruto to gasp in surprise. When Kisum and I fought the Kyubi Jinchuriki he displayed several skills we were led to believe he didn't have. Such as. For one he had the Sharingan and can activate them at will suggesting he has Ichiha blood. The room gave Itachi several looks of shock and disbelief. Are you sure Itachi? Positive, neither Kisum nor I saw or sense a Jinjutsu so in short, he has a real Sharingan. Anything else? Later in the fight he revealed the Rinnegan. All eight members looked at Itachi with horror, and that's when Naruto asserted control over the mind which crumpled under his will power. You know Itachi, it's not nice to talk about someone behind their back. Naruto's voice sounded deep, dark and raspy. The other Akatsuki looked at the body Naruto controlled. What are you talking about, Zetsu? Pain spoke agitated. Zetus is not here right now please leave a message after the beep. Naruto countered. Who are you? I am Naruto Zetsuki, a pleasure to meet you. Naruto Itachi said shocked. Yeah, that's me. How did you pause Zetsu? Pain demanded. Zetsu was created using the power of the Jido Meizo, and I am its master, as such I can control any creature spawned using the statue. How do you have the Sharingan? Itachi asked. Now why should I tell you? Not when you haven't even introduced yourselves. Naruto looked at Itachi and Kisum. I know who you two are so let's start with the lady. Naruto pointed at Conan. How did you know I'm a girl? Conan asked. Your chakra and the way you hold yourself. I am Conan also known as Tensei no Kami. Reading Conan-san. Naruto pointed at Pain. 
I am Pain, I am a god and the leader of the Akatsuki. Pien spoke. How did you get the Rinnegan? You don't radiate the same chakra as I do so that stand to reason that the Rinnegan wasn't yours first. I am the second Rakuto Senen. Well that's funny because I'm his reincarnation. Naruto pointed at Dadara. I'm Dadara, hmm. Dadara said. An Iwanuk nin, eh? Yeah, what of it, hmm? I'm surprised you aren't screaming for my death. Why would I do that? Well considering what my dad did during the war it's just surprising. Who's your dad? Lenato Namek is, the Kiroi Senko. You're his son. Yeah what about it? If I had any intention of returning home I could capture you for a full pardon. Good luck with that. Naruto pointed at Sasori. And you are. Sasori. Sasori respond. Soon as infamous puppet master, interesting. Then he pointed at Kakuzu. Now I'm curious who you are and why you have five different chakra signatures. I'm Kakuzu and that's all you need to know. And last but not least the scythe wielder. About fucking time, I'll make you into a proper sacrifice for Jashin Sama. Hayden spoke. I'm Hayden of the way of Jashin. Well, now that introduced ourselves I am here to tell you something give up, your plan is worthless and unobtainable while I exist. If you wish to continue down this foolish path I will annihilate you all. With that Naruto severed the link between him and Zetsu. When Naruto opened his eyes he saw Hinata looking at him concerned. Are you okay? Hinata asked. You seem to have zoned out there for a few minutes. Yeah, well I just learned something interesting and gained a new ally. Hinata raised an eyebrow. Should we continue home or would you like to stare off into space again? Naruto slapped Hinata's arm and laughed then they continued on their way. Time skipped 13 days later. Naruto and Hinata were walking down the street holding hands when the sense three chakra signatures suppressing themselves but steadily getting closer. Do you feel that, Haim? Naruto asked. Yep, want to do something. Hinata countered. Sure. Naruto shrugged then they both vanished and reappeared behind Konohamaru and his friends and held them down while a cage bunshin from Naruto held Yudin down. Their stupidity has just gotten you killed. Naruto and Hinata said simultaneously as they held kunai to each kid's throat. Oh man. Konohamaru said. This time I could have sworn we had you. Or not even Jen and you all did very well. Naruto said sheathing the kunai and ruffled Konohamaru's hair. We have years of experience on you, the fact you did this well is impressive. Hinata said smiling. Thanks Hinata ni, Konohamaru said smiling back. But. We haven't lost just yet. A fourth voice said behind them, Naruto and Hinata turned to see Hinata's sister behind them. Impressive a pincer formation. Naruto said raising an eyebrow. You got us Hanabi smiled at this. Is what I would say if we weren't cage bunchins. The three jinning vanished in a poof of smoke, the squad of four entered a protective formation back to back drawing kunai, when four kunai with tags attached to them landed at their feet, whose eyes widened when the tags started smoke and then exploded in a burst of streamers. Naruto started laughing at the four before him's faces as they emerged from the shadows. I crack myself up. The four academy students slumped, depressed as they had, once again, been outwitted. Naruto walked in front of them and pulled out some money for each of them. Go buy yourself something nice, on me. The four thanked him then ran off, Naruto held out his arm to Hinata. Now, where were we? Just then they heard a cry of pain, and they both ran around the corner, and they saw a kid with a catsuit with makeup on his face holding Hanabi by her scarf, who was struggling to make the kid let her go. Let go of Hanabi. Konohamaru shouted drawing a kunai. Oh I let her go after I teach her respected. The catboy said. Let her go, Kankura you know what he think. The girl behind him said. He's not here right now and besides someone's gotta teach this brat respect for her elders. Kankuro replied, just then he felt the cold steel of a kunai against his throat. How about I teach you some respect? Naruto said in a deadly voice. He's so fast I didn't even see him get behind me or even sense him, who the heck is this kid? Kankuro thought sweating bullets. On top of that, I give you four very good reasons to put her down. One. I don't like it when people my girlfriend's sister, two. That brat as you called her is the daughter of the head of the Hyuga clan's daughter, Hiyashi Hyuga, three. If you don't let her go, I'll slit your throat, four. Your friend in the tree doesn't seem to like what you are doing. Kankuro looked at the tree where Gara stood upside down. Gee Gara. Kankuro started sweating even worse than before. Kankuro. Gara said in a dark monotone. Put the girl down, you're an embarrassment to our village. Gara Shunshine down and walked over to his teammate's sibling. D they started it. Shut up or I'll kill you. Kankuro let go of Hinabo who ran behind her big sister. Naruto took the kunai away from Kankuro's throat and pocketed it. Naruto turned to Gara a friendly smile on his face. Well, 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 look who it is. Naruto said as he walked over to Gara. It's been a while, Naruto. How has life been treating you? I am well, yourself. I've been fine. 
Who is the brunette? I can sense she is like us. My wonderful girlfriend, Hinata Hayuga. Gara looked at Hinata then back at Naruto. So this is the famous Hinata I have heard so much about, you were due her beauty no credit. Gara was slammed with a huge wave of killer intent, and he held up his hands in surrender. I know, she's off limits. The Kai stopped and Naruto smiled again, and then, faster than either Kankuro or Tamari could react, Naruto was in front of Gara or Rasengan inches from his face, the thing stopping the attack from smashing into Gara was a thick layer of sand grabbing Naruto's wrist and a small spear of sand at Naruto's gut, Naruto's smile widened. Your defense and offense speed have increased, I'm impressed. Naruto dispelled his Rasengan and slipped through the sand and walked over to Hinata and wrapped his arm around her. So Gara, wanna join me and Hinata for some food and we can catch up. Actually Naruto-kun, Hanabi and I are need back at the compound for some clan business. Hinata said giving him a quick peck on the cheek. Come on, Hanabi. Okay, Ni-chan. Hanabi said. Bye Naruto Nai, bye Kinohamaru-kun. Hanabi's face flushed red at what she said to Kinohamaru. I I mean, can we go now Ni-chan? Hanabi ran off and Hinata gave Naruto a knowing look and followed her sister. Well Gara, shall we catch up on old times? Naruto asked. Sounds good. Gara said then he followed Naruto, and they were chatting while Kankuro and Tamari exchanged nervous looks. But Hanabi and Hinata. Hinata looked at her little sister and smiled. So Kanohimaru-kun, eh? Hinata asked, Hanabi flushed red at her sister's teasing. Hinata ni, that's mean. Hanabi whined. Let me guess, everyone knows about your crush on him, but he is painfully oblivious. How? 